All right. Well, the little icon here says that I'm live, so I'm just going to go with that. Welcome, everyone, to Happy Hour number 28, where we are going to be discussing the greatest movie of all time, and that has got to be Big Trouble in Little China. And who else could I do a task like this with but Gary Nerdrotzik? Thanks for coming on board, man. It's great to have you on for this. Thanks for having me aboard for this. I am honored. Uh, yes, uh, it, and it's going to be tough to talk about uh, this John Carpenter masterpiece, which is probably, yeah, I would, it's, it rolls around in my top five. It hits number one, then, you know, two or three, but I, I can watch this thing a hundred more times. Well, no doubt. One of the, it's fun when movies were fun. It, yeah. It I remember that. I remember it. <laughs> it feels like a long time ago. <laughs> it was God. This was, this was made in 86. So I was, that was a long time ago. I was 16 when it came out. Uh, and I remember uh, seeing for the first time, I had ne I'd never heard, didn't know the movie was being made or anything. And I watched a little clip on a show we had here called Entertainment Tonight, which was like the only, like if you're a nerd, it was like the only show on the air that you would get a clip of maybe, you know, Empire Strikes Back or Raiders of the Lost Ark or whatever movies being made that you're interested in for like 30 seconds. They'll talk about it. And you sat around for 45 minutes through the gossip to, to see this like two second thing. And I saw behind the scenes footage of this movie. I'm like, what the hell is this? And uh, yeah, Kurt Russell's there going, yeah, it's just it's about Chinese black magic monsters and it takes place in San Francisco. I'm like, I can't wait for this. This sounds brilliant. And it's nothing they would make today. Like nothing. No. It's one of those funny movies, right, which for some reason I lump it into the same sort of category as Tremors um, in that it's kind of a low-budget movie that's slightly schlocky. You know, it's obviously got tongue-in-cheek, um, but it plays it just serious enough that you can really get invested in it and get bought into it. It kind of goes down that same route as Ghostbusters where um, – you know, everyone's in on the joke except the actors and the characters in the movie. You know, they're playing it straight. And so because of that, it just works really well. Um, and it's an amazingly smart screenplay for what it is. Uh, and we'll obviously talk about it more as we go through the movie. But um, yeah, there's just there's so many aspects to it that are it's really well written. It's brilliantly paced. It does really smart things with characters like Jack Burton. Um, and it's got just so many quotes that, like, I still use now. Like, I just love it. <laughs> it, it does. It, uh, may the wings of liberty never lose a feather. It's one, yeah. of, <laughs> yeah. one of my favorite after they're uh, drinking the six demon bag. But yeah, I, I, I honestly, my favorite one is uh, when they're about to go into the brothel and um, Jack just looks at everybody else and he's like, if we're not back by dawn, call the president. Call the president. <laughs> Right, Keep it's just pure nineteen eighties bravado. It's fucking brilliant. <laughs> Back when you could call the president, and you know the president wouldn't be scared by the noise in the box coming from the table. You know, <laughs> I wouldn't want to do it these days, but back then maybe. Yeah, it, it was, it was, it was great. And you're right. In the eighties, there was a string of movies that had this perfect balance of humor and adventure. Uh, and you could pick any one, you know, uh, 48 Hours, Be Beverly Hills Cop, Ghostbusters, Tremors, Big Trouble in Little China, uh, even even Raiders of the Lost Ark and Indiana Jones, to a certain extent, were able to be funny and light enough. But then you take it seriously. I, I don't know. Maybe it was easier to sus uh, suspend disbelief back then. Uh, but, you know, people knew knew how to have fun. And and part of it was uh, and I'm forgetting. I'll look up his name. The 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 main character of this movie, uh, it I mean, it's Jack Burton. That's who you're following, but that's not the hero of our story. He's not the yes. hero. Actually, he does a lot of stupid shit and knocks himself out, and we'll talk about that. Uh, but uh, I was watching a little behind the scenes, and they were uh, John Carpenter was telling him, like, okay, this scene is like tongue in cheek. Okay, now this scene, it's serious. You have to take this serious. Your life depends on this. I, I want you to act like you're you're in a you know a, a, an Academy Award winning film, and and that balance was struck perfect. Um, and that has a lot to do with John Carpenter, who's, who was an absolute genius. Uh, there'll never be another guy like him. He does his own music, uh, knew how to hustle Hollywood, still knows how to hustle Hollywood better than anybody. Yeah, he's had some, you know, some not so good movies, but most of them are great in their own way. 
Uh, and yeah, I, you know, it's, it, I wish we would revisit this. We'd love to revisit so much, uh, you know, from the past and the eighties and all that, but what we haven't revisited is, is fun. Uh, America still has, uh, especially Hollywood, a, a stick up its collective ass that it needs to remove in my yeah. opinion. It, movies like this just had that, that America still, has, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, movies back then, they just had that irreverent sense of humor. They had bravado. They had like just these these cool fucking characters who didn't give a shit. Uh, and yeah, now, obviously, as we've covered on both of our channels, like so many producers and writers see movies now as a social platform rather than an entertainment one. And the result is you don't get entertained anymore. You get preached to. Uh, and that's what we miss. We miss movies like this. And it's not that hard to do, you know? Um, oh, to have yeah, fun. You, no. You, you, know, you know, you talk about John Carpenter, and he's an interesting one because he is unique, that's for fucking sure. Like you say, this guy who produces his own music for his movies, um, you know, arguably kind of faded out in the 90s because I think he was either burned out or he couldn't get the budgets that he needed for what he wanted to do. Um but back in the 80s, man, he was just on a roll. You know, mm -hmm. he was producing movies like The Thing. Uh, he did Halloween. He did Big Trouble in Little China. You know, I, I think it went as far as um, The Mouth of Madness for me, which was a great little horror movie with Sam Neill, which I really liked. I really liked those Lovecraftian kind of movies. Uh, and I think it kind of faded out after that. Um, but it's, an, it's a funny one because... A kind of action horror comedy isn't what I would associate John Carpenter with. You know what I mean? I wouldn't have thought he'd be a director who would do a film like this. Yeah. But he it, really pulled it off. Yeah, because his humor was, I mean, it was there, but it was always like really dark uh, and satirical. And this one is uh, not satirical. This is pretty, it's just uh, a light. It's light for him. Yeah, yeah, very much. Uh, but it, it's got the... You know, the cast in this movie is just perfect. Like, you know, every so often they just nail it with their casting and they've absolutely done it with this one. You know, Kurt Russell is one of those guys who just, you know, he exudes charisma in everything that he does. But in this, he's just in his element with his, you know, he's doing his John Wayne impression. He's got the, the tank top and everything. Uh, he's, he's just having an absolute ball. Um, and, you know, you've got Victor Wong, who's just that dependable character actor that's been in so many movies but every time he's in it he just absolutely sells whatever he's in like he's great um and lopan was it james was it james hong that plays him yes yeah another great like another great actor that just yeah he's just awesome you could tell he was having so much fun in this role too god he was hilarious oh, um, he has some great lines especially his crotchety old man lopan yeah. you know? <laughs> that was the best part and we'll get to those oh yeah for sure some of these quotes so i don't mess them up too but uh, uh yeah I, well, I guess as we we get through different scenes you know quotes will come to mind because there are lots of them no it's filled with them i can make a soundboard off of this movie yeah um so just for people in chat um just to let you know obviously super chats tend to come in as we're going um, we will get through all of them, obviously, but we, we tend to leave them towards the end just so that uh, we don't keep interrupting what we're doing. But uh, yeah, what we tend to do is just talk a little bit about the movie, kind of work our way through from start to finish and enjoy the show. Hopefully we'll, we'll see you at the end of the film. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully you all watched it before uh, or you've seen it recently. I'm sure you have, but uh, I, I can't imagine there's many people here who haven't seen it. Surely if there's any justice in this world, they'll have seen it. Um, yeah. So we, we get this little introduction. It's a funny one because it, it does, it, it bookends this movie with uh, a kind of uh, flash forward to Egg Shen played by Victor Wong, who's getting interviewed by like a cop or an insurance guy, something like that. And it's a really funny way to start the movie, but it's like, you know, the guy's referencing like a big um, destructive event with balls of green fire going up into the sky and buildings getting destroyed. And you're, you're obviously thinking, what the hell has been going on here? And he references a guy named Jack Burton, who's obviously going to be important soon. Um, and that's when 
when Egg Shen starts talking about how magic was involved and how it's real and all the things that you thought were nonsense are actually um, real things. That's when he does the little demonstration with the the lightning in his hands. Yep, which is really cool. No, it's it's really strange. Uh, and I thought about it while watching it. So you start the movie with the end, with, with or the epilogue, right? You start the movie with the epilogue that you would think would be something they refer to back through the movie. Like you would go back to the lawyer's office and he'd go, well, this is when we, and they never do that. They never yeah. do. They just, and that's what's great about it. They, they just, they set up the legend of Jack Burton. Uh, you leave Jack alone. And <laughs> then we're off to the races. And this movie does not waste a single second of time. There is no, no. everything you don't, you can't get up and pee during this movie that you no. just can't. Uh, and that's, that's, the beauty of uh, what's 139 minute perfect minutes of cinema. Yes, um, and what they, I think, what they say, the, the golden rule of screenwriting is that within the first 10 minutes, you kind of need to establish your world um, and set the stakes. So you should get your main character set up, um, have some idea of what he wants to do, um, and understand the, the kind of world that this story is going to be taking place in. Um, and I was referencing earlier how this and Tremors are both perfectly written screenplays that do exactly that just really slick really efficient um they establish everything very quickly but in a way that never feels rushed and forced um it just gives it to you like just straight up and it's so well done and it's it's always a pleasure to see good um slick screenwriting like that like so often nowadays like it's so clunky and it's um you know it, it's so amateurish but like movies like this just really nailed it and it's it's always great to see when it's done well um so that is your little flash forward um yep. to give you an under like some kind of clue about jack burton going to be an important part of this story and then you get to see him and he's actually just a truck driver who's on his way to san francisco um and he is <laughs> played by the awesome kurt russell um and you know, it's straight away you get a sense of what this guy's like. He's on his radio, just talking to whoever is willing to listen. You know, he's driving along. He's got his fucking massive sandwich as he's like chowing down, um, and he's just he's just having the time of his life. You know, yep. <laughs> Movies like this somehow make just driving in the rain seem cool. I don't know. It did. It, uh, like, yeah, on a on a very windy hilly road, he's just uh, you know living the best life he can live. Uh, and, and, and wouldn't trade it for anything and well actually doesn't later but uh yeah and you know this is where we get uh the classic line you know like like my like my last wife told me i can only i only drive as fast as i can see which is <laughs> there's the other one as well where it's like if some guy slams your head against the wall and asks you have you paid your dues you tell him yes sir the check is in the mail that's right <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's just like total stream of consciousness it's great just a yeah. guy saying whatever comes into his head um so he arrives in chinatown in san francisco and uh, i guess he's making his deliveries and stuff and he ends up getting into a, an all-night gambling session with uh wang who's his friend he's like a local restaurant owner um and so it literally goes on the whole night like it's dawn by the time they're finishing up and Jack Burton is is one big time. He's won everything and cleaned up, and Wang's, you know, down to his last few dollars. And that's when he challenges him to a, a nothing or double bet. Uh, and he's he's he claims that he can slice a glass bottle in half with his his um yeah. It's just like Fever. a machete he's got. Fever, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so you know he, he gives it a go, and it's and it's an important scene as well because it's really it's really valid later. So he hits it, and the bottle doesn't cut in half. It just goes flying across the table, and Jack just catches it. Perfect. Um, and, you know, you get the great line, it's all in the reflexes. All in the reflexes. Uh, so initially, you're made to believe, like, Jack is the man. He can do anything. He's, uh, you know, he's really competent. He's, he can win at gambling. He's got these great reflexes and stuff. Obviously, you find out later on that's not the case, but like that's the way the movie fools you. It sets him up as the hero. Yeah, uh, he and and you know he wins the he wins the bet. He you know he's got all the money, uh, and then of course Wang Chin uh, he doesn't he can't uh, pay off the bet. So uh, 
Wang Chi has to go pick up a girl, and it looks like he's trying to get out of it. Uh, and you know, and first he goes, "I'm a poor Chinese boy." He's like, Jack, <laughs> "You own a restaurant, dude. Uh, you're richer than I am." So yeah, I'll follow you. He's all, well, "I got to pick up a girl from the airport." He's all, "I'll follow you." And then he's all, "Get my truck." He's all, "I thought you were gonna follow me." Yeah, I came to my senses. Get in the car or get in the truck. So they drive. Yeah. They're driving to to SFO, uh, San Francisco Airport. Uh, and he's he's talking about a girl. He's got to pick up a girl with a Chinese girl with green eyes, which is very rare. A girl that he knew from when he was a kid and he came over to America and saved, uh, you know, his entire life uh, to, to bring her out here and marry her. So uh, Jack decides to go along and they just yep. happen to they get to the airport and they also run across Gracie Law. Gracie Law yeah. by the very hot Kim Cattrall. <laughs> I was gonna say, man, honestly, like, cause I I knew her from being in Sex in the City, which you know I just I was vaguely aware that she was in that, and she was kind of older by then. Yeah. Um, and she was in Star Trek Six, but again, like, she was very much um, dressed down for that. She was not meant to be attractive, but in this, she is gorgeous. She is yeah. really beautiful in this. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, everybody liked Kim Cattrall back. Then. Yeah, yeah, very popular. Uh, and I, I have to, I have to give props for her performance because she was obviously very aware of the kind of film that she was in, <laughs> and she just yeah. went for it. It's very, like, very dramatic, very over the top. She is chewing up the scenery, um, and again, just like Kurt Russell, just having fun with it, and it's great fun. It's great to well, see. That's what made her like twice as hot was her performance and she was funny uh and yeah she she wasn't like um you know the girl with green eyes she just basically sits there and doesn't say anything for but it's perfect it's it's she's almost like a painting that they carry around or something <laughs> it, it's hard to explain uh but she doesn't say much but she she does her role well but kim cattrall like yeah she 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 holds up with uh with jack bird and they're flirting from like which starts right away which is spot on she's you know how good is their dialogue when they first meet each other though god it's so good it's you know so because you know she's like oh where i'm standing it's miller time you know yeah. obviously because he stinks of booze because he's been out drinking all night you know what he's I like, when it's miller yeah time. <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly he's he's straight away he's coming back with like some great like you know one liner but he never gets the chance to finish because this this uh gang of punks Kind of interrupt them and brush past them and it's the lords of death lords of death uh, the lords of death who are dressed like absolute spivs like it's incredible <laughs> <laughs> those glasses that they wear are just awesome it's like something out of fuck i don't know it's like some kind of 1980s version of a cyberpunk future <laughs> like it's yeah great. that was some new wave stuff going on there uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, I love what when 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 he first walks up to Gracie Lies, oh, can I ask you a question? She goes, No. He's like, Well, then let's get right right to it. Would you consider? And that's when she says, Nah, I'm down with it. <laughs> it's fucking good. It's good stuff. And you can't ask these questions in film anymore. No writer would put that in there and be, oh my God, he's being so toxic with her right now. But you, yeah, but you know what's interesting, right? If this was redone now, she would he would come on to her with one awkward um, you know, come on line. She would shoot him down instantly, and he would just wilt like a dead flower. You know, yep. he would have nothing. Whereas in this, even though he's getting totally rejected by her, he's still like undaunted by it. He still has another one-liner on the go. He has something else like smart to say. That's how dialogue between men and women used to get done in movies. Like neither side kind of backed down or or like was better than the other. They both just had something smart or witty to do. Uh, it, and that's the difference now. We don't have that. No, we've lost our mate. Well, we're not going to procreate anymore as a species, so maybe that's good. But uh, yeah, that we've lost our mating ritual. The, uh, the the whole part of that is it's the that's some of the best parts, you know. Just uh, yeah. when they're getting getting shot down a little bit, not totally shot down. You tell, so you're like, okay, well, she didn't like slap me or anything. So I mean, <laughs> not it. If they uh, haven't, if they haven't maced me, then I'm still good to go. There's still yeah, a chance. Oh, well, we there's, I've got a chance. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So the Lords of Death. Uh, so Gracie Laws, uh, they're uh, picking up somebody else, and 
uh, Wang is there picking up his his girl. Lords of Death steal both of them, uh, and they take off. And and uh, the, the, I, I think that well, I think they fail to get the girl they were after, which was Gracie Law's friend. Uh, yep. And so they take Mao Ying instead, uh, and so they end up taking her. Um, Jack tries to intervene, and you know one of the guys brings out like a, a switchblade. And you know, starts flicking it in front of him, and Jack's just like got nothing. He's like, "Hey, where'd you get that?" You know, he gets taken down within a matter of seconds. Yep, um, that's well, your first hint well, that this guy yes. is not quite the hero of the story. He is out of his element, uh, and yeah, so so they they take off with the girl. They run, and all of a sudden, it's off to the races. Like the movie has started. You've got yeah. your characterization. You've gotten to know, you know, Wang and Gracie and Jack. Uh, and you know, we, we'll meet a few characters on the way, but it's, it's on. And I love, uh, that, that scene in the parking garage, right? So they're running after him <laughs> and they're, they're in the car and there's a shot and it's such a John Carpenter shot of the camera, I guess, fixed on the hood of the car. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. And, and you just, it, it's such a cool perspective and, and the Lords of death are kind of, they're all driving with their weird glasses on. And then there's a shot of the girl like laying down, but it's, it's such a cool shot. I was fucking, I watched that thing over and over again. Uh, that's yes. John Carpenter. Uh, yeah. and it works. And then of course they're running up on, um, Wang and Jack and that, you know, you do that, that rush thing. And, uh, that, that was very, well, it's before Sam Raimi loved that shot. Sam Raimi loves that shot. Did it a lot in evil dead. Well, no, evil dead came out before that evil dead did come out before. So I don't know if he stole that from uh, Sam Raimi or not. I don't know who stole it from who, but it didn't matter. It works for me. Yeah. Uh, and, and so Jack, I think, knocks Wang out of the way. Uh, and they see the, this sports car speeding off. And you just get another great line from Jack where he just goes, son of a bitch must pay. Yes. <laughs> Again, he thinks he's the hero. He thinks he's the, the, the guy who's just going <laughs> to sort everything out. <laughs> No, and, and that's for one. That was just '80s dialogue. That's the kind of shit that worked back then. Um, but yeah, and, and it's again, you know, this movie does not f around. It is off to the races, and you're, uh, you know, there's no time to even think. So they're running. They're back. They have to take off to San Francisco. Uh, and Jack asks Wang, he's like, "What? What the hell happened there?" He's like, "I don't know. Why can't you walk in Central Park? Why can't you pick up a, a person on the road? Because you know." Because America's people are crazy. Problems. People are crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, man. try living in 2021, Wang. <laughs> you yeah, got a new perspective on crazy, yeah. my friend. Yes, you ain't seen nothing yet, son. So I, I think Wang figures out that uh, the Lords of Death are going to go back to their hideout in Chinatown. So that's where they go. They track yeah. them back there and they end up driving down like the back alleys, uh, which is no fucking small thing to do in a big 18 wheeler. But uh, yeah, they do it. They're driving down these little alleyways. Um, and that's when they come across a funeral that procession that's happening. Um, and, and so like, there's all these, these guys in white robes kind of just walking down the street with their coffin. Um, and you know, Jack stops his truck and it's like, what the hell's going on here? Cause Jack asks a lot of questions in this movie. Like every time something goes on, he's like, what the hell's happening here? The hell <laughs> yep, what's going on? Yeah. And it's about three quarters of the way. Till he uh, through the movie before he even gets a you know kind of a somewhat summarized story of what this was all about and yeah. again he's the audience but it's fine uh, yeah and I, lo when, I love when they're in Chinatown they they go down a street that's I mean this is how long ago it was that's blocked off now that's just for it's for pedestrian traffic uh, it's where the the little gate thing is and uh, but they they go uh, those alleys are real now obviously they were built up for the movie but those little back alleys in Chinatown those that shit's real there that's pretty and that's one of the cooler parts if you if you go past the touristy part and you go into other places you can get like turtle soup you know mm. things like that the yeah the settings and the backdrops and stuff are almost a character in themselves in yeah. this movie because it's so like the environments they go through are just so cool looking. Like, and you, you know, you can never quite tell if it's a soundstage or, or like real alleyways and things like that and real buildings. Like, it's quite well done. Um, except at the end when you, 
the, the final battle final <laughs> when battle. they're in a big neon enclosure. Yeah, which is great. <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 good. Like, it's even misty, I think, as they go down this alleyway. So there's that kind of uh, that stage smoke effect, which is just it's cool, you know. Um, and so there's this funeral procession going on, and then these other guys appear from behind the truck, um, and that's the the Chang Sings, is it? No. Um, Fuck, there's there's two rival clans that are fighting each other. The oh. Chang Sings are the good boy guys in like yes. yellow. I'm I'm blank. It's it's Chang Sang Ching or or the other way around. I can't remember now. Hang on. The, yeah. yeah well, the chat will probably be able to help us out with this. The Chang Sings are the good guys. Ah, uh, the Wing Kong. The Wing Kong. Wing Kong that's right. Well, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're close. Uh, yeah, the Wing Kong, so they're the bad guys, and they're in red, so you know they're bad because they're dangerous. And then uh, you get this great moment where it's all silent and nobody's moving, and again, Kurt Russell's like, what's going on? <laughs> and Wang has to explain it's a Chinese standoff. Not to be confused with a Mexican standoff, it's a Chinese yep. standoff. Well, these were Chinese people standing off as opposed to Mexican, so that's yeah. that was the giveaway. Did, did you notice in this scene, Like, because I guess they had a lot of people, a lot of extras, Quite a few of them were not Chinese not or Asian in Chinese. any way. Chang sings, by the way. Uh, yes, uh, I did notice that when it got a little deeper, you know, third or fourth string, it started mm. looking like Maury <laughs> and Bill. Yeah, <laughs> just like any any guy who's got dark hair is like, oh, that'll do. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's fine. And there was a couple of Italian looking guys in there, but hey, they are in, they are an inclusive organization. Okay. Yeah. Indeed. Okay. Indeed. Yeah, they could they could take anyone in. So there's there's one good there's one guy who comes out who's just a big bald guy with a big mustache and he's just got six shooters right across his yeah, <laughs> right across that. his chest. <laughs> Nothing screams Chinese like mysticism like six shooters like an old Western. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it starts like this massive gunfight where people are killing each other and stuff and uh, and then I think it it um, devolves into like hand to hand combat with both sides you know they, they just charge into each other like medieval armies um and it, i don't know why but it just really makes me laugh and i assume like carpenter went for this but the fight scenes are all very chop socky in in this sort of moment like it's all like yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You know? <laughs> just like you're really stereotypical like you know, martial arts fighting. It's not fluid like it would be in real life. <laughs> it's just great. And every time they kill someone, they just go. <laughs> yep. They go, ah, kill it. And there's like no blood anywhere. But there, yeah. was, there was a compound fracture that was pretty bad. But uh, yeah, it, it, but it worked. It worked. Um, I, yeah, I, I love the subversion of expectations and the standoff. You thought they were going to do the, the, you know, the Kung Fu fight right away. No, it was pull out the fucking Uzis because it was the eighties and everything had to have Uzis. Uzis. Yeah. That was the weapon of choice back in the eighties, man. Uh, oh, that, yeah, definitely. And uh, somehow they survived. I mean, just bullets spraying throughout the entire alley. And then they did the Kung Fu fight with the, well, of course, with meat cleavers and, you know, giant blades of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People are getting kicked through shop windows and stuff. There's just one great shot that always makes me laugh where two guys fly kick one person in the head at the same time. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, favorite, my favorite one is the, when the guy gets stabbed in the dick and, then, and, it, and it zooms and it zooms the fucking Wang and Jack go, oh. <laughs> in the truck so yes but a guy gets stabbed right in the dick and i was like oh, 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 oh you feel that one it's like in your soul oh man yeah every man can relate um yeah so there, all this battles going on and it seems like the the chang sings are gradually winning out uh because they're better fighters but then all of a sudden three dudes just appear out of nowhere and they've got the, the big like straw hat things on they're dressed up as like ancient samurai and it's the three storms man it's the three storms who just are awesome characters as, as henchmen they are brilliant i love watching them they are the best uh god they, they've uh, you know I've, i always i've always wanted action figures for big trouble now funko made these like little ones that i got uh but they're not proper and i've always wanted action these were the three best bad guys. i loved lightning 
That was my favorite, of course. Everyone loves Lightning. He looked cool. He had the coolest look about him. He was always... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> last Survivor, too. Uh, Rain and Thunder. Uh, and, yeah, they you could have done a movie with these three guys easily. Uh, just them. I'd have been fine well, with that. There's the old, uh, you know, it's a well-known story that when they were designing Mortal Kombat, the game, they based Raiden on, you know, one of the storms because he just oh, had no. that great look about him, you know. Uh, I did not know that. And Mortal Kombat's coming out uh, tomorrow morning, right? Yeah. Damn, that just, that came on fast, man. It did. We need got to a lot. give that a little watch. Yeah, we've got a lot to review in the next uh, 48 hours, you, you and I. Um, yeah oh yeah i'd much rather watch mortal Kombat than the fucking in the winter soldier yeah anyway um moving on yeah uh yeah so these these three show up and they just lay waste to everything around them um they they um start throwing fucking knives at people like bullets don't do anything to them uh, no nope, um, that standoff when they're standing there i love when they, they 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 slowly they you know they get in a formation and then they get the knives and then the other knives just load out in the air for them and they come up like this and, they, and they, it goes right into their hands that was so fucking cool and then they just throw it at the three guys who shot them well i just love how they have to do a little twirl through the air before they get through <laughs> <laughs> it's like fight. <sighs> you know it's yeah it's so fucking cool I, if you take away the flipping through the air and all the posturing the movie's an hour long but i love it i love it Oh yeah, it, it's it's all part of the it's all part of the atmosphere and it's all part of the style of the movie. You know the fact that like when they twirl through the air, you can tell they're on wires and it's kind of fake looking, but it doesn't matter because it's exactly what the movie's meant to be, uh, and so it just works great. Yeah, it sets your I guess it's it sets your artistic boundaries early, so you know what to expect in this movie, and it could be anything, uh, and that's why it works. Uh, and, and I, I, you know, I, I couldn't technically tell you how he did it cause I'm not a filmmaker, but, uh, f man, he did a good job in this one. Uh, cause like you, you still, um, while you're watching it, you're still taking the movie seriously in a movie that's completely bonkers. So yes, being able I, to I, is amazing. I, I think it, it goes down that similar road to ghostbusters where, there's a real comedy element to it, and clearly what's going on is absolutely insane. But the characters and the actors play it straight. It's it's like a joke that only the audience is in on. And and so it walks that really fine line between um you know drama and comedy. Uh and I think that's what that's a really, you know, um uh, it's a really difficult thing to do. But this movie does does it perfectly. It does. It does. Sorry, I heard a banging on my door. But I all guess right, do you want to go check, man? Hey, I'm going to go check. Sorry, right. there. No, no, no. That's cool, man. I'll do. Uh, I'll do a few super chats while we're waiting. Thank you. All right, all right. Well, Gary's away. I shall. I shall go through some super chats here because it'll make it easier later on. Just give me one second while I bring up the list. The dreaded list. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I wasn't expecting to do this until later, so I'm not organized for it. Ah, uh, here we go. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, Olatization says, Gary, the Immortal Hulk was the single worst comic book idea ever. Changed my mind. Okay, I'll bring that one up for Gary when he comes back, actually. Um, Dan Ronan says, got to meet James Hong at a convention once. He signed my DVD twice. One of them was over Jack's face. <laughs> That's cool, man. Uh, yeah, James Hong is awesome. Yeah, he, uh, he does a great performance in this. Sorry about that. Thanks. All right, it's cool. Um, there was just one super chat for you, just so I don't forget later. Um, it was from Olatization here. He says, Gary, the Immortal Hulk was the single worst comic book idea ever. Changed my mind. Oh, I, I did respond in chat. I don't know if he saw it. Uh, I, I couldn't possibly change your mind because it's one of the worst, but it, it, is it worse than one more day? I don't think so. And top five, maybe. It's a bad idea. It was a it was an idea that sounded good that was bad. That turned out Fair bad. Enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. So when we were we were talking about the film there, so these three storms have shown up and they're laying waste to everyone around them, and that's when um, 
Wang just tells Jack to gun it and get the hell out of there. So he drives his truck straight towards them. They flip out of the way, and then all of a sudden, this this fourth guy just appears right ahead of him, and uh, it's Lo Pan, the antagonist of the movie. And it, it's a great little shot, actually, because he's just stood there, and he's like, ah, come on. Uh, and Jack just drives straight into him, and you think, come, oh, that was easy. He's killed him. Um, but obviously, you see that he's... Uh, He's not been harmed by this in the slightest, and he, he kind of walks out from behind the truck, and he does that great little moment where it's like, ah, where light comes out of his eyes. Oh, that's it's almost iconic, and yeah, and it blinds Jack, and he has to abandon his truck, uh, and you know they still they have no idea what's going on, and I love that Jack is just like, what's going on? what the hell you know that's yeah. all he is this whole time and they throw some water in his face he gets his eyes back and uh then they have to go kind of regroup right and figure yeah, out yeah so they, they run into like a basement or something and um because there's there's still cars and like gang members everywhere there's one of the chang sing is in the basement with them and he says that it's like the the three storms that have appeared to to kill them all um, and so again, they they flee when you know the um, the bad guys start coming down the stairs after them. Yep. Um, so they they basically make it to safety. They go out through the the fucking sewers or something like that, um, and they go to Wang's restaurant to try and regroup. Um, and that's when you <laughs> Jack's there in like a, a fucking kimono or something. <laughs> like he's just yeah. he's he's on the phone to his insurance company trying to claim for the truck. <laughs> yeah and it's great because it's like you know i like scenes like this that are kind of dense you know you've got him having his conversation with the insurance people but then there's lots of information being given to the viewer while this is going on because i think wang's uncle is there and you know he's pressing wang for information about what's been going on um and and so that's that's what gradually comes out that uh lo pan has appeared and everyone's like oh shit lo pan what does this mean um and we find out Lopan is uh a demon in human skin of sorts. Jack isn't believing it. Uh and well, and first, you know, Wang doesn't even want to tell his uncle about what's going on. And he's like, You saw Lopan on the streets? He's all yes, we did. And uh we find out low you know, through all this, Lopan is this uh, you know, he's been around, he's a some kind of well, crime lord business. Uh, a, a, you know, business leader, whatever, and owns a bunch of property, but uh, he's re reclusive. Nobody's seen him in years. Um, and then um, Wang's uh, friend comes in and gives us, fi we find out the Lords of Death weren't really uh, doing anything on anybody's orders. They wanted to, I love this part, by the way. They just wanted to grab a girl for kicks. And I'm sitting there watching this scene. And, um, and yeah, and then they end up with another girl. And this is when Gracie Law comes in. She just shows up at the restaurant. She's like, I'm Gracie Law. Yeah. <laughs> well, she comes in and it's like, don't worry, everyone. It's just me. Just like, Gracie wait, Law. Everyone can fucking see who you are. Like, you don't have to tell them. <laughs> and it's uh, never really made clear what she does or why she's there. She's just like a person who gets involved in things. She, she is a nosy, do gooder, kind of hippie lawyer. I, I, you get one scene where she's helping somebody immigrate into the country. And then her other friend is from like the Berkeley free press or something like that, which is funny as hell. Uh, but then she comes in and she goes, don't worry. It's Gracie law. Uh, and then we, we, uh, we find out that, Oh, I'd lost my train of thought. It was after that where Wang's friend tells him, Oh, so the Lord's of death. Eddie. Eddie, yeah. Yeah. Eddie says, uh, yeah, they took a girl with green eyes and she's all, Oh my God. That's like, you know, getting that's like luxury interior to these people. Yeah, it's like leather bucket seats in a car. It's like yeah. an extra. So yeah, what, what they discovered is the Lords of Death. <laughs> they they basically just go around grabbing random girls and then they sell them to like the local brothel where they can be you know used. Um, and so that's where they've taken Mao Yin. And so they 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 figure out well that's where we're going to have to go. We're going to have to try and sneak in there. And buy her or like make contact with her so we can free her. Um, and the only person that can go in is Jack because Gracie yes. can go in. She's well known. I think Wang is well known as well in the area. So it's, it's got to be him. Uh, and so 
and, and the whole time I'm watching this part, Drinker, I'm like, this movie's getting canceled. This, uh, you know, the clock is ticking on this movie. So, oh yeah, buy it while you can, because <laughs> I'm yeah, like, get oh. it in physical media. Yeah, yes, because when Gracie says these people. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, shit, uh, you know, and it's just a movie of its time and it shouldn't matter. It should never matter. It was made in 1986. OK, it wasn't. Plus, made- yeah, I mean, and she's referring to gang members. She's not referring to like the whole yeah. race of people, you know, so I think it's fine. Like it's, uh, you know, to, to a normal person, it seems fine. But I don't know, man, they'll find some reason to cancel it. I, I've I've never I you know I've heard a lot of people say they haven't seen this movie, but I can't say I've heard a lot of people say they thought this movie sucked. I'm sure they're out there. I'm sure you're gonna somebody's gonna pop up in the chat right now and say it. But uh, <laughs> yeah. not you know in my uh, few years on this planet, I haven't heard it very often. Uh, so yeah, this no, I've heard nothing but praise about this. This this movie should never be touched. It should never be remade. There should never be a sequel. Uh, the only thing is maybe a 4K release. That that would be the only thing I'm I'm for. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so so Gracie comes in and we get a quick, you know, every time they stop, they you know Jack goes, "What the hell?" and they <laughs> get a little more information, basically. Uh, I love how he still tries to crack on with Gracie when she comes in. You know, yep. even with all this shit going on, he just cozies up to her with his with his sake and he's like, "Ah, oh, you just happened to be here on a dark and stormy night, huh?" <laughs> <laughs> never misses an opportunity does jack burton <laughs> no he does not and that's why we love him that's why we love him so yeah, yeah they got to go to the brothel yeah and he has to act like a you know he's gonna have to go in and uh and and nerd it up a little bit uh so he can find out where they're keeping her and yeah so so he goes in and did y'all uh, think it's funny though as well like he he goes in in disguise, but nobody fucking knows him anyway, so there's no reason for him to do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there were absolutely none. <laughs> but they did it anyway. And it was pretty funny. So he Yeah, comes- yeah. Oh, it's it's it, yeah, when he when he rocks up and he's like Henry Swanson is my name and excitement is my game. <laughs> my game. <laughs> Got his little glasses <laughs> on. Uh, he's all, you know, yeah. So I'm, I'm looking for a girl with, uh, I'm looking for something in particular, uh, a girl with green eyes. Hmm. So that, you know, gets, uh, everybody suspicious there at the brothel. Uh, and he goes in and meets some other girl in the meantime, what we got Gracie and Eddie and Wangs, uh, waiting outside. And uh, is this where, yeah, Gracie sees the other, uh, this is where she sees her friend. Uh, she's yeah. all, I recognize the person in that car, and that's where we get uh, Margo. Yeah, yeah. So she's like a, a, a wannabe reporter who's, you know, she writes for some shitty rag or whatever, and she's trying to make it into the big time by popping this story. Um, and, and so Gracie's just kind of leading her along, um, like, oh, yeah, don't worry. We've got this all in hand. We've got one of our best men in there stirring the pot. <laughs> I love Again, that. Again, just so dramatic. You know, she's just trying to, like, maintain the excitement of this moment um, but you know what that sells you is like these are two very bored women who are getting into something way over i mean they're just looking for adventure right and uh, they have no idea what they same with jack too uh and it's hilarious it's hilarious how serious it's played but how funny it is uh and uh then so jack is that he's he's with one woman and uh it's not uh who, who we're looking for he's trying to you know Humper for information and you know he asks like where are you from hong kong oh do they kind of what happens to girls do they get kind of rotated out and she's all well kind of please take off your ties oh yeah my wife gave it to me and then uh shit come, hits the fan we see a big green glow above the above the brothel and the uh i think it was at thunder who comes in first right was it thunder yeah, so he breaks in through the roof, and then uh, lightning comes in and uh, nabs Mao Yin. You know, he takes her away. Uh, the, the the lightning like strikes the madam of the brothel, who just fucking knocks her through a wall. <laughs> it's yep. so pointless, but I love it. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> they had this uh, somebody getting getting roughed up a little bit, so why not the madam? Uh, yeah, and so the other two are there, and I think that's when Jack decides he's going to intervene. So he goes in, he pulls up the guy's straw hat, and he just fucking lamps someone right in the face. <laughs> yes. And it does nothing. And he does it again, 
still nothing. And then I just love the look on his face where he just goes, <laughs> he's like, I'm going to get an ass whooping right now, aren't I? Yes. And he gets an ass whooping. Yeah, so, he gets kicked right across the room and just fucking destroys a couch in the process or something. Yep. <laughs> There's a bunch of Johns and uh, ladies running out of the building. They ripped a big old hole in the roof and they fly out of it. And and I love that it again. It was an unnecessary. Uh, see, but I love how it shows them fly out and then fly across a little bit through the hole. And it's just like, and I don't care that it kind of looks like shit. I it, it was it looks so fucking cool. Everything about this movie is cool. Uh, it, it, it always feels like it was intentional. You know, yeah. if you see something that looks kind of like schlocky and 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 fake looking, I just always have the impression that that's exactly how Carpenter wanted it to be. He was going for that kind of, uh, you know, cheap, low budget exploitation kind of look to it, and it just it totally works in context of this film. Um, and it, you know, it's funny as well. Like when everyone's running down the corridor, it always felt like that would be a perfect moment for a bit of TNA, but it doesn't happen. Yeah. Like everyone's got some kind of clothes on. Like, and for an eighties movie, that is so rare. Normally, you would just get a woman who's just randomly topless, uh, but they don't do it. They know, yeah, I guess they wanted to keep their PG rating, I guess, and that's holding back. Uh, yeah. But that's a great point. That's a great point. There was boobs everywhere in the 80s, and we just took it for granted. And uh, look where we are now. Yeah, I think we need more boobs. If we had more boobs, I think that would benefit society. I don't think there's many people out there who would say, oh, I don't like boobs. You know, they, they make me angry or something. No, you know, <laughs> everyone's lives are improved by them. They remind me of my mother. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so they, they've escaped with Mao Yin. And so Jack's just getting carried back to Gracie Law's apartment with everybody else. And and so, you know, you get this great line from him where he's like, look, I'm, an, I'm a reasonable man, but I've just experienced some very unreasonable things. Again, he's just asking, what the fuck is actually going on here? He still doesn't get it. He doesn't know. And they keep saying, you wouldn't understand Chinese mysticism, da, 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 you know, and uh, he keeps on going, no, I will. Really? I will. I just want to know what's going on. And they're all, come on, Jack. We don't have time to, you know, stand around and talk. Yeah. Uh, and- yeah. He's like, lay it on me. I can take it. I can take it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but they but- don't know either. They, they don't understand what's going on. So no, no. Um, so and we don't know what's going on so this brothel there was a girl abducted uh by these super powered beings floating around chinatown not being noticed uh and well and the whole uh, underlying thing is like everybody in chinatown knows this stuff is going on right and they just don't talk about it to outsiders uh which would be probably considered a stereotype of sorts that um would be accurate so, so there you go. Yeah, uh, and and so they realize that if uh, if Lo Pan has got Mao Ying, then he's probably got her at the Wing Kong Exchange, which is like his big company. It's like his front company that he he owns, and so that's where they're going to have to go, like Wang and Jack. And so they they go in with the most fucking harebrained scheme imaginable, where they just pretend to be like phone company repairmen, um, and. You know, there's a certain wisdom to it. Like, I've heard people say this before. Like, you can get away with so fucking much if you just pretend like you know what you're doing. People won't question you, you know, and that's what they try to do. They just, like, they walk right in through the front door, um, pretending like they're there to fix the phones and and straight into um, this this warehouse kind of area at the back. Um, and I think that that's when they, they take an elevator down, don't they? That works at the club. That works if you're up to something much worse. But I was able to get into some under uh, under 21. I was be able to get in some bars, but just walking in, you know, rolling in like we own the place. Yeah. Failed miserably sometimes, too. Yeah, well, it's never guaranteed, but, like, no. you've got a good chance. If, if you look like you know what you're doing, then most people will, will probably accept that, you know. If, if all else fails, wear a high-vis jacket and pretend to be like a, a, a tradesman or a workman or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all it takes. Walk in with a telephone saying, I'm the telephone guy. And why I would know, you? They, they've got no tools or anything. They just walk in with that. It works. 
<laughs> it's like you even hear Jack later on saying, holy shit, I can't believe that actually worked. Yep. <laughs> they got hit well, and it turns out, well, they go yeah. in. And uh, this is, so the, we were just talking about this. Uh, the cool thing about this movie is it takes place inside a building, essentially. A, a big building that might be the size of a city block uh, on multiple levels, but it's all just running around. Uh, and, and it's, you know, I was, I was kind of marveling. I was, we were at one point in the movie. I'm like, man, I, you know, and I watched it a, about a month ago and I'm like, I remember this being a little later in the movie and we're only halfway through. Uh, and that's, what's so cool is the movie moves. So it's paced so perfectly. Uh, it, 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 it leaves you wanting more at the end, but it's still a perfect ending. Uh, but th this is, again, things don't slow down. Uh, and I love movies like that. I hate, uh, you know, the, nowadays, so many things feel like they need to stop and explain everything to you that just happened. Right. Mm. Or they'll stop and like everything you just saw, somebody will tell you everything you just saw. And then we'll talk about some feelings in a hallway and then we'll start it again. So the um yeah the the pacing of the script is really interesting because you've got several different encounters that happen throughout this movie. First of all, you've got the the encounter in the back alleys of of Chinatown where the, Jack and Wang are completely unprepared. Then you've got the brothel infiltration where you've got a little bit of like Jack pretending to go undercover and all that stuff. Again, they get caught off guard and the the storms win the day. Then you've got the um, infiltration of the the, um, the Wing Kong, where they actually win to some extent. They manage to free a lot of the prisoners that are there. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the final confrontation where they go into Lopan's lair, like the, the thing at the very bottom of all of this. And so you've got that, that really clear structure of them getting slightly better each time, doing slightly better against their enemies. Um, and so... It, it like you say, it just feels like there's always another plan moving along. There's always another thing that they have to do, and it always it keeps things moving really well. There's there's quieter moments. There's <clears throat> bits where it does slow down a little bit, just to give you character moments or to kind of tell you what's about to happen or whatever. But it's just really well paced like that. It's well thought out, it, it, and it moves. So it, and it moves forward we, where you don't have an unreliable narrator or a flashback or a mystery box. It's just a story unfolding. And we're going on, on this little adventure with Jack with him. And we, we all know the same shit as things go on. Uh, you know, basic storytelling. I miss that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and so yeah, they, they, they think they've made it in. They go down in this elevator that they've discovered because they found tracks on the ground where people have been dragging someone and they think it's Mao Ying. So they got the elevator, they go down, it, it just all of a sudden the lights go out, they get shut in and they're they're trapped in this thing and water starts to flood in to it. Uh, and that forces them to to bail out. They're swimming out underwater and you get some really fake fucking skeletons that are hanging upside down. <laughs> this the hell of the upside down sinners. Yes. Yes, because as we know, Chinese have got a lot of hells. Apparently, they have a lot of hells, and uh, one of them is the upside down sinners. And they, they, uh, for, but fortunately, they left just enough oxygen and and space. So if somebody, if you do try to trap somebody in the elevator, they can survive, uh, which they do. But they're in there with a bunch of uh, rotting dead bodies, which I cannot be good for you at all. Drinking no, that, that water, ha that can't be good. Uh, but anyway, I guess they get fished out of there because you see, um, I can't remember which one of the storms is above them. I think it's wind. Uh, uh, but anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's the Thunder has them and he's beating the shit out of them and he's got them tied up in their uh, in the wheelchairs, which are which is gets funny later. Oh, uh, this. Yeah, there's some great scene. Oh, no, like it's that. It's, uh, it's wind. It's wind. He's got the it's not Thunder. It's 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 the one he's got a ball that he's blowing up but he blows it into jack's stomach and you know jack's like come on fight me like a man and he's yeah <laughs> by a ball yeah. uh, <laughs> and uh wang is you know tied up in the chair and he's getting the, his face he's getting smacked around a little bit and yeah they well something. they need him for something otherwise they would just kill him yes exactly um and while this is going on um gracie and um eddie 
have uh, gone back to the restaurant and that's when you meet Egg Shen. He's been brought in because he's like the expert on Lopan. He's like a Chinese mystic. Uh, and, you know, he's explaining what Lopan is a little bit. Like the, he's this ghost demon, you know, thing that's been cursed. And, um, you know, they're, they're, they're going to have to fight him. You know, he's, he's kind of gearing up to, to get involved. Um, but he's not ready yet, I think. So, like, you're you're getting little hints about what's going on, and you int- you're introduced to this character of Egg Shen, who's going to be important later. It always felt weird that they waited until then to bring him in, because there's like the uncle, who's another old Chinese guy who kind of knows quite a bit, but he doesn't really play any more part in the story. But then Egg takes over, so I don't know why they didn't just bring him in right. Like when they first go to the restaurant, it's a, it's an odd choice, but yeah, and that's a good point. I guess they wanted to just have another character there. I mean, he's in it briefly in the beginning when the the truck goes into Chinatown for the first time, and, he's, and it's just him doing his tour, right? And he's glo- yeah. glossing over the history of China Chinatown, which is you know during Gold Rush, uh, Chinese people came over to uh, you know to feed, and they came over and they. they they worked hard on the transcontinental radio railroad and sent their money back to their families. And da, 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 didn't talk about all the other horrible stuff that happened. And he yeah. goes, and that's what made this beautiful Chinatown. <laughs> and yeah. Then he almost went <laughs> back in the truck and that's the, yeah, you're right. The next time you see him is, is then that's uh it's a good halfway through the movie at that yeah. point. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know if there was some reason behind it, but like it, I guess you've got two guys who kind of know about all of this stuff so they can have a conversation with each other and th- then you can exchange dialogue quite effectively, um, rather than him just explaining it to someone who doesn't know anything about it. Uh, but either way, they decide that they're going to have to go and help out because Jack and, and Wang have been gone for too long, so they're going to go in as well and try and um, get them out. But either way, um, so Jack and Wang are brought in in their wheelchairs um, into some big ornate throne room thing, which is going to obviously feature later on in the movie. You know, and there's big statues everywhere and all that stuff. And they're left there, and then this little old man rolls in on like an electric wheelchair, <laughs> um, and it's uh, it's a very very old version of Lopan, um, and you know. He's a crotchety old guy, so when they're trying to talk to him, he's like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's like, we're looking for low pan. He's like, ah, then you have succeeded! <laughs> I am low pan. Uh, you get that great line as well where Jack's like, I don't get it. Low pan's like 10 feet tall. And he just goes, shut up, Mr. Burton. You are not put upon this well to get it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know yes oh no uh and um uh what is that yeah that's where they have returned and this time they oh egg shen is with them little bastard sorcerer is brought to, oh I, oh i love it when he when he see god i keep trying to remember what he said when he saw him in the um in the security footage this pisses me off to no end yeah that was it <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so yeah we see a really 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 old uh low pan and uh he needs a girl with green eyes and he and he needs to marry this girl yes so you uh, find out that he was um uh, he was a sorcerer in ancient china and he was um defeated in battle and he was cursed by the the first emperor of china which basically said you're going to be uh, you'll be in in um, corporeal, so you've got no physical body. You're just this ghost kind of lingering around um, until you can marry a girl with green eyes. Um, and, and so that's what he's looking for all this time. He's been looking for a girl with green eyes that he can marry and lift this curse and become mortal again. Um, and again, you, you know, Jack just immediately chimes in saying, come on, Dave, 2,000 years and you couldn't find one bra to fit the bill. <laughs> You must yep. be doing something seriously wrong. <laughs> yep. And then he cops to it. He's all, you know, <laughs> we all, there have, been, there have been others and, you know, it just doesn't work out. <laughs> yeah, I love how he's trying to relate to him. It's like, come on, man, you know, you can't find the right one. It happens. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. 
Uh, but eventually, you know, he's trying to find out uh, information from Wang. He wants to know, uh, were, was the, the girl's father, like, what did he say? A mystic that he said? Yes. Yeah. So he wanted to know what province she was from and whether her father was a, a, a mystic or a, a wizard or anything like that. Um, and I, I think Jack just looks at him and he's like, are you insane? Is that your problem? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> It's just it's it's the dialogue is so great because Jack just has no fucking clue about what's going on. Uh, like when when uh, Lo Pan starts talking about Ching Tai, who's like the god of the east that he has to appease, and Jack thinks that that's him. And he's like, "What do you what you mean you?" And he's like, <laughs> "He's like, no, not me, Mister Burton." <laughs> Uh, this is what, yeah, this is what he's, um, <coughs> he says, yes, there have been others, to be sure. There are always others, but you know, Mr. Burton, the difficulties between men and women, how seldom it works out. Yes, we all keep trying like fools. Yeah. <laughs> he's getting all sentimental on them, you know. Yep. But yeah, that's when he sees the security cam footage um, of, of uh, Gracie and, and Eddie um, coming into the building. So he's, you know. He's like, ah, oh, this kind of thing pisses me off no end. No he end. Trundles, trundles out of there. Uh, and so Jack and, and um, Wang are taken away to be put back in their cell or whatever. Um, and I think that's when Jack manages to topple his wheelchair over so they can get free. Um, and, yeah, um, Eddie and the others, they're they're brought into this place by thunder, I think. And they're they're in the elevator and, like, gas comes in. Like yep. they've been put into a trap, so it knocks them out, uh, and they're all taken away unconscious. Um, and so, I, I think um, neither uh, neither Jack nor Wang can find a way out of the cell that they're in because it's like the doors are locked and stuff. Yeah, I think they, Jack even they get thrown into a cell it, in the wheelchair still, right? Where that's welded shut and it's got skeletons hung up, uh, and then. Uh, what Jack is able to knock himself over and get free because he's always got that knife in his boot. Got to remember that. Yeah. And uh, the, I guess, I don't know how, but the light's coming from the floor. Uh, they wanted to point that out because cinematically it looked great. Doesn't make sense, but it looked great cinematically. And oh, yeah. yeah, so they, but then they hear somebody else coming back in. So they get back in. The, the, uh, Jack is able to free Wang and then they get back in their chairs and put the blindfolds on and they bring in Eddie uh thunder brings in eddie and, and hangs him on a hook and uh and jack jumps him and put a knife puts a knife to his neck and then immediately gets like swatted off like a fly uh, yeah. and, and then wang tries to fight him he gets swatted down like a fly and then jack gets gets on him again and they're able to to get out uh i love then, that line as yeah. well they're, they're bailing out of there and he's like come on jack let's go and he's like how yeah, he's fucking yeah. hanging on to this guy no uh, get away. <laughs> there, there some great lines like that like the oh we'll get to that one later how'd you get up there it wasn't easy yeah uh, yeah fucking unashamed plot hole right there um but yeah like thunder just like, throws jack off i think he can inflate himself so that like jack yep. can't even hold on to him anymore he lands on the wheelchair and just goes careening down this slope like this hill um, takes out a couple of like Wing Kong guards who were in his way, like just like you know they get bowled over like bowling pins, and he crashes into like this giant well thing in the ground. And I, I love that shot, like where it starts to lean back over the rubble, and it's just him like holding on to the the wheels so he can try and push it back up. Like it's just a really well constructed shot. Yes, and, and oh god and you feel it you know he pulls pulls himself up and then jumps out of the chair at the last second and falls yeah. in the well yeah uh, but it was funny as hell when when he got when he was being knocked you know he when he was rolling backwards and you see our heroic uh jack burton screaming and <laughs> 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 it's hilarious it's ah, the, the comedy in this is just it's so well done like it it has made me laugh more than like you know a dozen so-called comedies from today combined yeah you know uh, and it's not even trying a lot of the time it's just so so well put together um so they've got some guns finally and um they they head over to the um the prison area where gracie and the others are being kept 
Uh, and that's when, you know, I think Eddie and uh, Wang head up onto this catwalk thing where they, they distract the guards so that Jack can, like, free the prisoners. Um, and there's a great bit where he's he's crawling over the cage that Margot's being held in. She's like, how are you going to spring us? <laughs> he just goes, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. And uh, well, th- he, but he's got his Uzi, right? So he figures it out. And I love that the, it's all women guarding the cells, right? And they're kicking the shit out of Wang and Eddie at first. But then, like, eh, they'll pop him in the face and they'll, you know, they'll get the, they, they, you know, they kill a couple, they knock a couple off, the, and then yeah. they, they just smack him in the face. And you, you see them both look at each other going, we had to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're kind of like looking like oh they were a handful weren't they <laughs> yep yeah like damn i just love how fucking every single chinese person in this movie is a martial arts expert <laughs> yep. like eddie's a maitre d at like wang's restaurant and he can just fight like you know a crazy in bastard <laughs> in multiple forms of, of martial arts i might add yeah. <laughs> oh man That's so stereotypical at all yeah, not at all. Uh, so they're fighting. Like Jack's able to free the prisoners, and he gets Gracie out. And so the, all of them are are like bailing out of this place. They need to get um, up to the the office level. Um, and you know Jack's leading the way because again he thinks he's the uh, he thinks he's the the hero of this piece. And he's saying <laughs> to everyone like, "Okay, I'm going to open this door from here on out. It's going to be fine. Just some offices and stuff. We're just going to get the hell out of here." <laughs> opens it and like all the wing kong are just waiting on the other side <laughs> yeah. and, they, and they're just stood there like right at the door we may be trapped <laughs> yeah <laughs> the timing is amazing yep <laughs> <laughs> so they, they start smashing down the door and i think the others go hide um and it's just left to jack and wang to try and hold the the position um so this guy like smashes down the door. I think Jack is actually able to take out a few of them with his gun before it jams. Yeah, um, and you see, <laughs> you see him. He tries to draw his knife out of his boot, but he fucking throws it across the room. Across the room. Yep, and then he has to run. And Wang kicks the shit out of everybody while he's fucking around looking for his knife. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, like by the time he's finally ready, he comes out and he's like, ha ha! He's got his knife and his gun, and everyone's just knocked out. Before they got there, they had to jump down into the sewer, right? So, this is the scene where they get down in the sewer, they jump in this water, and they had to swim through a pipe, and they're all checking on each other. And like, uh, you know, uh, once the next person up, once uh, once Margo comes, Margo, where's Eddie? I don't know. And then Eddie comes up, Eddie, where's Wang? I don't know. And then Wang comes up, uh, Wang, where's Jack? I don't know. And then Jack comes up and then kisses Kim Cattrall. Uh, and she's all, hey. And he's all, oh, sorry, just caught up in the morning moment. Just glad to be alive, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then, uh, uh, will you stop rubbing your body up against me in this pipe? You know, it's like he's always trying to hit on her, even while they're trying to escape and God, I miss these. Uh, then that's when they they get out and they finally make it after Wang beats the shit out of uh, all those guys when Jack lost his knife. But we yep. see that they're being watched. Uh, they yes. walk by. They walk by uh, some you know statue or facade in in the wall, and uh, we see some yellow eyes. Yeah. Oh, this this fucking creature is just incredible because it shows up at the wedding later as well. Yeah. <laughs> so um. Yeah, they're, I, I guess they're they're pretty much home free. They're just waiting to get out of the the, the final kind of reception area right at the front of this building. Um, they're all about to bail out, and Gracie's bringing up the rear, and she just sees the eyes at this statue, um, and like this fucking claw thing just comes out and grabs her and pulls her in, and it's like this. <laughs> it's like a Bigfoot or something. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like some weird monster thing that just carries her away. <laughs> It's uh, the fakest looking bit of prosthetics as well. Oh God, yeah. This, I mean, it was an '80s monster. It was almost like it was left over from another movie. And they're like, "Fuck, let's put a monster in this." You know? Yeah. There, there's, there's, yeah. There's. It gets really bizarre at the end, and you know, and not overdone. That's the cool thing is like, there's a monster in this, and then there's another thing that happens later. But that's about it. They don't, they don't overdo it, and I, that's what I they. You know, we had John Carpenter just didn't give a fuck at this movie. He's like, I'm going to put in whatever I want. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I love it. So, yeah, they, they're getting in the bus 
they get in the bus, they're about to take off, and then they realize that they left, well, the you know, the girl with green eyes behind and Gracie Law. Gracie Law yeah. was behind too. So they got to come up with a plan to go back. Uh, in the yes. meantime, Lopan is very happy with uh, with what he what he has right there. He's yeah. Got, so uh, because he, he to to lift this curse that's been put upon him, he has to marry a girl with green eyes, and then he has to sacrifice her by killing her. But the the great thing that he's got now is he has two girls with green eyes, and so you know he can kill one and keep the other. Happy days for Lopan. You know that's that's exactly what he wants. Yep. Uh, and so. There's a big, you know, another movie wouldn't have bothered doing this, but there's a big elaborate sequence where the two of them are, you know, stood there and the, the three storms all go through this big dance routine with knives and stuff. Like they're all doing their powers um, and it <laughs> it makes their eyes go like white. So they're, they're, they're like, you know, fucking weird possessed thing. They hold onto a sword. It takes them up into the ceiling, and you know they touch like this really fake looking like object thing oh. there that glows green. Uh, it's just all really like very eighties looking stuff going on. But it's just this big extravagant sequence that you you totally didn't need, but it just is so fun to watch. I fucking love it. Yeah, because it's it's going in between them preparing to go back, and they 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 meet with Egg right. Uh, and yeah, they're switching in between the she- scene where they're do- doing what would they call it the the burning blade. They have the survive the burning blade ritual, but it does yes. it goes on a long time, and it doesn't hurt the movie at all. It, it, it actually you know kind of makes sense when you think about it, so it works. But uh, you're right; that's not again something you would see today uh it, and- it gives it gives a kind of weight to it doesn't it it gives it some kind of significance like oh there's lots of rituals and stuff associated with all this stuff you know it, it somehow lets you buy into it a little bit more that like it's not just something that's undertaken lightly like someone who's going to marry lopan has to go through all this stuff to make sure that they're worthy of him and i think it's it's fun to watch and it's intercut like you say with the 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 rest of the characters preparing to go back in and rescue them so there's always things happening it's always moving forwards always and so but this is the closest the movie comes to taking a breath right takes little ones but this one is like a a pause before the third act and we meet egg and we get kind of what you know he's a he's a you know a mystic uh very rich man uh and he's been fighting david lopan for years uh, and trying to thwart him, and and there is there's really only one way to thwart him, and that's if he actually does get married and becomes corporeal. Otherwise, he is just a, you know he's 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 a ghost. Uh, he's matter spread across uh, all time and space. Yeah, and uh, all he wants to do is take over the world. That's all you know. It's not much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and rule the universe from beyond the grave. From beyond the grave. Yeah, <laughs> it's like indeed. Or check into a psycho ward, whichever yep. comes first, huh? <laughs> I went into a hell where they skim people alive. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they meet up with Egg Shen and they're gonna go down into the sewers to to get to Lopan's domain. Uh and so they, they go into this big um it's like a warehouse kind of thing with the egg owns. And, you know, he disappears off into the background for a minute, comes back, and he's in all these, like, battle robes, you know, with, like, his six-demon bag and stuff. Um, and he's, like, all set. And, you know, you just see Kurt Russell t- look him up and down and go, yeah, ready when you are, Egg. Yep. <laughs> like, even now, he still doesn't buy into any of this shit. Oh. He's like, this guy's fucking insane. And we find out about the six-demon bag. So, yeah, so he opens up this little... Uh, he's got a pole down to the netherworld in his building so they slide down a little you know fireman's pole and they're underneath chinatown and all of a sudden it starts looking like a fantasy movie and it's so fucking yeah. cool god i love this set where there's like you know it, it first it's a very well lit underworld uh and there's you know there's uh this this foggy liquid that's uh not not water and it's not oil; it's the I, life, uh, the Earth's lifeblood. And we find out that thousands of years ago there was giant earthquakes that killed a lot of normal people, and a lot of unnatural people were allowed to commit many sins in the face of the gods. And then he ends his story. <laughs> that, yeah, that, 
Yeah. You, you know, you know what's great about that though. It's so pointless. Like none of that dialogue means anything to the the story, but it's just this great incidental stuff that just it just really creates an atmosphere of this film. Like the, there's a real mysticism around it. Like from from the point of view of the Egg Shen and stuff. Like he's a guy that just hundred percent believes all of this stuff, and he's got all this amazing knowledge um, and all this lore, and it just dips into it slightly. It doesn't go into loads of stories, doesn't go into loads of detail. You just get little hints that there's this huge, complex backstory to all of it. And I think it's good. It's really, again, it's just really enough to get you interested in all this thing, all these things that are going on. And that, yeah, that combination of like dodgy looking sound stages and matte paintings in the background to make it look like a, a big underground world. There's nothing that says 80s more than that. And it's so... I don't know. It's just so good to look at. It's so much more interesting than a bunch of CGI crap. For yep. me, I, I, um, I would even go back to it. You never would, but uh, I would because there's something that makes it look more, well, way more artistic. For one, uh, it, yeah, it kind of looks like you're you're you know in the pages of a fantasy magazine or reading a comic book, uh, and it works. It works. And yeah, like when Egg's talking about the black blood of the earth that's underneath them, and you know, Jack's like, "What you mean, oil?" He's like, "No, I mean black blood of the earth." Yeah, and then he doesn't say anything more about it. You never find anything more about what this is. Doesn't matter. It's just little little bits like that. <laughs> just really, yeah, they really add to the movie. I think. Now yeah, that and this is of course they take their six demon bag right, so they take their liquid and they're not afraid of anything. Forgot that scene in the in the elevator. Well, that that comes later. That that comes later once they're in Lopan's right. like right. palace. My bad. Um, but there's the like they're making their way through the sewer system and like a fucking giant monster thing just comes yes. out and eats one of the guys, and and uh, eggs like, oh, you will come out no more. And Jack's like, what? What will come out no more? <laughs> come out <laughs> anymore? Yep. And, and well, first they were distracted by something bubbling in the water. Like it almost looks like something's breathing in the water. And then something from the cave comes and nabs the guy. Uh, and it, like it's the fakest looking, but it's yeah. again, it's so of its time in a perfect way. Uh, and yeah. you never see a monster like that again. No. And, and, yeah. and, and obviously they were, uh, you know, there was probably budget problems, but uh, these are good budget problems. This is when. Uh, a budget can maybe restrict you from doing too many things and that's why we get uh something that focuses on the story and stays and stays focused on the characters uh but one of the biggest problems today is too many resources yeah i think no i agree uh and so they make their way inside lopan's uh fortress under chinatown and i think that's the point where egg shen had pours them uh, yeah. pours them a drink okay before they go into battle um and yeah well, i love this scene because the music's just perfect for what's going on it feels really like epic and significant and you know they're, they're taking this potion that's going to give them extra powers and they're going to they're going to be able to see things no one else can see and do things no one else can do and of course jack's just standing there like what the what the fuck like <laughs> what is this stuff you know and um eggs just saying mm -hmm. like you know that it's going to give you this this incredible power and it's like, what? Well, wow, terrific! What more can a guy ask for? And they're like, ah, the six demon bag. <laughs> yeah, to kill a to what? To kill a dream, you have to be one. Yeah, and you will see things normal people can't see. So they drink it, and they're like, man, I feel I feel pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> feeling kind of invincible right now. Yeah, I feel good too. And then they, they, they give each other the sign, and he's all. Yeah. You notice there's one extra who puts his hand on Egg's shoulder. Yep. Yeah. And, and then Jack just kind of looks at him. He's like, "Is it getting hot in here? Or is it just me?" Yes. <laughs> yes. And you see the look on Egg's face when he puts because like Egg's like knows what's going on. And he's like, "Oh God." <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So this, yeah, and this is when they're intercutting. Uh, you know, Thunder doing his, you know. The, and it's fucking cool. He's all shaw, shaw. he's got his blades out, and uh, you know it, it, it's slow motion through them approaching low pan, and you and you feel like there's something big's about to go down. And everything about this is like we know, like, hey, it's 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 a basic adventure. We've got a guy trying to get his girl, uh, and and a friend is helping him, 
and uh, they're they're fighting bad guys. And we, uh, but there are things in this that happen in this movie that uh, you, that no, don't normally happen in your traditional '80s hero thing. I think one of the things the '80s movies did was make the hero much more relatable. Uh, you know, like uh, that's why Indiana Jones, for instance, you know, hated snakes, fucked up all the time, got his ass kicked. You know, that was something that started, you know, creeping in the late seventies and early eighties, uh, and it was making characters more relatable. And that was, that was what I liked about the eighties adventure hero, uh, was that they, they would fuck the, for one, they were funny. They weren't serious all the time. And I mean, we're also going from like an era of which was good, by the way, I'm not dissing it at all, but from like, you know, Charles Bronson and Clint Eastwood. And it was just, mm -hmm. you know, fucking badass is being badass all the fucking time, which is great. So you had these uh, that's that's what uh, Peter Quill is in in uh, in Guardians. You know, he's a throwback to this kind to this kind of character. Uh, and I think that's why a lot of people like that character, because they hadn't seen something like that in a long time. Yeah. But Jack's like, like uh, well, I'm Jack Burton and Indiana Jones are the quintessential '80s action characters to me. Anyway, yeah, and, and the thing I love about Jack is that he, you know, as we've discussed, you know, he is the the comedy sidekick in this story, and he's not he's not particularly skilled, and he, he doesn't have the the fighting ability of of Wang, um, and it's not really his story, but he carries himself with just utter confidence in every scene like even when he's completely outmatched with with what he's doing he still is like yeah i'm gonna fucking dominate this situation you know because he just <laughs> believes in himself that much and it's it's a great combination in a character because everyone everyone wants to believe in their life that they are the hero and that you know they're destined for great things they're going to do awesome stuff and it, it doesn't always work out like that but he's that guy who's just always sees himself as being bigger than what he is and you you can't help but root for a guy like that i think yeah. that just makes him endlessly enjoyable to watch absolutely uh a, a, a man who can fuck up this much and still be uh this confidence that's got to be respected it's got to yeah. be respected yeah uh I, and so they you know they've, they've taken their potion they go into like the 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 final confrontation and it's in this big underground temple uh <laughs> for some reason which has got neon lighting around everything like it's it's simultaneously the most tacky but also the most awesome thing ever <laughs> like yeah. i don't know how to describe it there's a fucking escalator that takes you down from a giant skull head <laughs> but, you know well, the escalator that's what i want to know <laughs> Yeah, could you imagine being the subcontractor that's brought in to do this? Like, yeah, so we, we've got this big temple thing. We need you to build an escalator in here. Like, why? What's with all these skulls and stuff? What's going on here? No, don't, don't, don't question it. Just build your escalator and get out of here. Yep. Uh, and then we get the we get the little eyeball thing. Oh, that yeah, the guardian thing. Yes, the guardian, uh, which is you know basically a, a spy for Lopin. Uh, the, the, the marriage is started in the neon theater temple, whatever it is, which I, I agree. I fucking, I wish I could have one of those in my house or a house that big one day. Uh, and we've got the, the two very hot women with green, eye, green eyes getting ready to get married. Uh, and they've got uh, the Lords of Death have somehow repopulated their numbers. So there's still a lot of them left. Uh, and we've got, uh, you know, thunder and uh, and rain there and lightning. And the whole ritual is started as, you know, our heroes slowly make it up uh, to, to the point of they when Lopan is about to get married. And he has to, I guess, stick a pin in uh, one of the in, in the girl's arm. And if and if he starts bleeding, then he's starting to become corporeal because he has to appease a a god so he's a 2000 year old former emperor that uh was cast down or he was cast down by the first emperor of china i think that's how what they said and uh and cursed so and his curse was it was to not have a body so he had the only way he can get it back is he has to appease this god uh and 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 marry one of marry the woman and then sacrifice her but now that he's got two women he can marry one kill one he can marry both of them kill one and keep the other 
for his earthly pleasures, as he mm. said. Yeah. And the only way to beat him is you got to wait till the marriage happens. Yeah. I do. I like how Jack shoots the guardian thing as well, just like because he can. Yeah. You know, and everyone kind of looks at him like, "What the fuck was that?" And he's like, oh, you never know until you try." Yep. <laughs> and he didn't kill it. He shot no, it. No, no, it just flew away. <laughs> and you know, like you, you think it's uh, and and it, the thing <clears throat> is, the thing is big for one. You know, it looks like it's something like this big. It's supposed to be something like this big, and I didn't realize that until I actually got the the toy. But. Uh, uh-huh. Imagine that big fleshy thing flying. And then I love that one gratuitous scene where it's like it shows it sitting on the ground and, and it's okay and it's licking itself. Yeah, it's licking the wound. On its, licking on the its wound. Face. Yeah. And it's like, thanks for throwing that in there. But that's what clues Lopan in as well that they're there because yeah. um, he, he goes through with the ceremony, marries them, and um, uses the needle thing um, to become mortal. Uh, and then it, the guardian spots them like they've made their way into the temple, uh, and <laughs> he just—he's like, "Ah, they're over there!" <laughs> you know? And I think it's Wang who just puts his sword right through its fucking head, like yep. kills it. <laughs> no, yeah, and the sound he makes—you're right. And the sound Lo Pan makes, I can't even double. I don't, I don't even know what he's saying. I don't even <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's just like his voice gets really high. And no, I had <laughs> I had the closed caption on because I thought they would translate some of it. But no, every time they spoke Chinese, it just said Chinese. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they're clearly saying stuff. It's like, uh, okay. Uh, and yeah, so I have no idea. But yes, yeah, so then they stuck a blade in uh, the, uh, and he's dead. The little yeah. Blade. Balls. So this is this is like this is where battle commences because like the all the the Wing Kong are there, uh, the Lords of Death are there. Like they they see the uh, the group of that have come in, and so they all charge towards each other. They're all screaming and stuff. Fucking Jack just starts yelling and fires his gun into the ceiling, <laughs> knocks himself out <laughs> immediately. <Yep. laughs> they make sure to go back and show you that he is unconscious on the floor while everybody. Yeah fighting including gracie law who's fighting yeah she knocks a priest like right into a pit or something doesn't she yep uh, so wang's doing some amazing fighting here like he's he's up against um wind i think like they're, they're fighting with swords in the middle in the air you know people are running up and down walls because they've got this special potion it's just awesome to watch like proper proper like awesome action scenes from the 80s like yeah no, and in the meantime, Lopan is still trying to finish the ritual while this fight is going on around him. Uh, and yeah, you know, they, they they started too soon, by the way, too, because the the guardian saw him. They wanted to wait a little bit longer, so he's still finishing out the ritual, and all hell is breaking loose. And this is where you see like Wang, like you know, kick a lot of ass. This is where he becomes the the hero of the story because he starts jumping because he takes on rain, right? And they just start jumping and doing a sword fight in the air and it gets like yeah. more ridiculous <laughs> each time they jump and it's fucking great. Uh, love it. Uh, Some people in chat actually are saying like uh, about what... what uh, Lopan says in that moment. Uh, one guy says that uh, he says usurpers. Um, it wasn't in Chinese. Another person says that he says seize them. Does so he? either one of those things could be true. Like because yeah, his, it, his voice goes really high pitched. It was really high pitched, and it didn't matter what he said. I laughed my ass off when he said it because you. Yeah, <laughs> the delivery is amazing. It's so fucking good. <laughs> uh. yeah, interesting fact as well. You know when he's putting the the needle into. Um, Mao Yin, like in the middle of the battle, he's still doing it, and apparently the the actor jabbed it in like really hard, and she actually like you can see her go like ah fuck, like because like he actually did stab her with it by accident. Oh no, little thing. Yeah, they just kept it in because ah fuck it, why not? Ow. Uh, yeah. So there's so there. Uh, oh, and then uh, Jack Burton finally wakes up again. Right. And he sees one of the guards coming and he tries to pull his knife out. He can't pull it out in time. So he just shoves it through the bottom of his shoe, yeah. lays on his back and then stabs the guy with his with with the shoe and then can't get him off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's like in Lord of the Rings when Gimli's got like a, a ward yeah. on top of him. Yep. 
And then uh, the other one jumps up. He can't get. Yeah. He, so he spends that time fucking around while everybody else is fighting again, including Gracie law. The ritual gets finished and then uh, they, they send the girl away and Lopan fights egg in, in a, in an astral plane battle of magic. And yeah. Lopan is like, doing it like it's like a, yeah it's just like a video game console like ah come on come on come on <laughs> but it's cool you see it this giant image of these i guess giant samurai warriors just swinging fucking you know swords at each other and i'm like god damn that is so cool yeah uh, um so the they fight to a standstill um i i think wang is able to kill uh rain because he just throws his fucking sword at him and like spears him. Because like the guy's flying down towards him like forever. Yep. Just like this shot of him like ah, fucking sword just goes right into him and he flies through a wall and explodes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's good. Uh, yeah, and then uh, what? Thunder got thrown off, and then he came back. Uh, then he takes off with the girl with and lightning brings down. Uh, eventually, um, Lopan fights off Egg. And they take off with the girl and they bring the whole building down behind them so they can't be followed. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Egg blows up the building some more so they can follow him. Uh, and this is where uh, we get to the classic, you know, Jack Burton's with Gracie Law and they're in the elevator together. And uh, yeah, I'm like, I was at a wedding. And he's all, what you wearing? She's all, he's all, what are you wearing? She's all, oh, I was at a wedding. Like he couldn't fucking notice. And, uh, you know, he, he tells well, her, you know what, you know, what's great about his line there? Because he's like, I can see things no one else can see. And then he kind of looks her up and down, like almost like I can see through your clothes or something. Yeah, like he just yeah. like really looks at her for a long moment. And he's like, why are you dressed like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then they make out and he's got uh, lipstick on his face. Yeah, and then like so he goes into the big, um, you know, the big throne room where um, Lopan has got Mao Yin hostage, um, and so he like Lopan is mortal now, so he's he's elated, you know, and he's he's ready to take on the world, and that's when Jack Burton strides in with his fucking lipstick all over his face. <laughs> it's, it's, like, <laughs> it's on his teeth and everything. It's yeah. <laughs> But he's just again. He just conducts himself with such fucking confidence. Like ah, I've got this one, you know. And uh, he comes in. And he's like, uh, you know what old Jack Burton says at a time like this. And fucking Thunder is just stood there like who? <laughs> God, me, Jack, Jack Burton. Burton. <laughs> I think that's when Wang shows up to back him up, and he's like, old Jack Burton says, "What the hell? What the hell?" You know? What a fucking line, honestly. Yep. And uh, so uh, Wang starts fighting Thunder, which is it's hilarious how they do that fight. You just see it through a doorway and you see shit flying. And, you know, like <laughs> the crew is like throwing. OK, throw a desk. They throw a desk and then they run across and you see more shit flying. It's fucking it, it, see. That's the kind of stuff that's cool because it's funny. It, it's they use that scene for comedy. And then uh, Jack throws his you know uh great oh um gracie law already got mad at him she's like do you have a gun he's all got a knife he's all a knife uh so she, yeah because she, she's like oh he's this guy's 10 feet tall and he's like seven seven <laughs> <laughs> like that's fine i can yeah. take on seven feet i can take him on so he, misses, <laughs> he throws the knife at him and misses mrs lopan uh then lopan uh throws his bride back at jack and he's all oh that's a nice knife uh, and then tosses it, and uh, of course Jack uh, a throwback to earlier on when he yes. when saw him catch the bottle. He catches the knife and throws it right back in the low pan's head and kills him. And says, yeah, "Remember, remember setup and payoff. Remember when that was a component of screenwriting, what? where you know movies would set up things early on that would like you know you'd almost forget about them, and then right at the end when you think all is lost, then it gets it gets used again." Isn't that nice? Isn't that cool when movies do that? It is. Or when TV series don't do it, but then they say they did. Like when Daenerys burned down King's Landing and then they tried to tell us that they set it up systematically over years when they didn't even know the ending when they started some of that shit. Yeah. yeah. Set up. 
don't talk to me about that. But uh, yes, and it was, and he, you know, he ends it with it's all in the reflexes. It's- I love that moment because he's so yeah. fucking pleased with himself. He's forgotten about Wang because <laughs> there's a really long pause, and he just goes, Wang, Wang. <laughs> <laughs> And they look through, and Wang's they getting his ass kicked, and he runs. Isn't it? Isn't it great though? Like Thunder, fucking like he's he's chasing them all around the 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 room, like smashing stuff up, and like he just sees a table with like a statue on it, and he just fucking hacks it in half just because it's there, and he's pissed yep. off. <laughs> uh, and well, and then he loses his temper. He sees his master dead. And he just blows the fuck up. It's so weird. <laughs> it's such a weird ending. And he gets so upset and he balloons up and then he turns into like uh, uh, this, you know, again, it looks like 80s prosthetic character, which is everything I love. And then he yeah, blows there's steam coming out of his ears and everything. You know, you hear, you hear Wang go, I don't think he's going to stop. <laughs> like running away from him. <laughs> and then it's it's it, they aren't quite out of the woods yet there's a hole uh in the ceiling that they have to jump through and thankfully uh what is it lightning approaches them very slowly so they could uh jump through the hole and they boost everybody up and then there's another hole in the ceiling on top of that and that's where we see egg and uh jack's like how'd you get up there he goes, it wasn't easy. That was it, you know, but it was the way yeah. the line was delivered was fucking perfect. Uh, <laughs> so they have a little grappling line and they, everybody goes up through the hole and uh, lightning slowly comes up through the other hole and they drop a statue on him, kill him. And everybody is saved. Supposedly. Yeah. yeah so they, they get, cause Jack's truck is in the warehouse upstairs. And so they, they spot it there. Um, they, they, it's funny because they get in it, and he's like, "Oh, the keys are gone." And Gracie says to him, "Well, don't you have spares?" And he, and and, and it's straight away he goes, "Of course I do, but they're under the." And then he realizes he's sitting in the fucking truck. He's like, "Oh yep. shit, they're here." Yep. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah, they smash out the place. They drive down the street. They stop at the red light for some reason because, like, Gracie tells them to. And that like, was- yeah, they can't believe that they made it out. That was so. See, that's the kind of stuff. It's hard to explain. You just got to watch it in the movie. They like, it's the little human stuff that they throw in, right? Like, who would think to like, uh, you know, like, of course I know where the keys are. Oh, damn, they're in my own car. You know, that's like shit we do all the time that the yeah. hero doesn't. And then stopping at the red fucking light, which is hilarious. She's like, red light. You know, with all the shits going on, they just survived all this shit, and it's like. And then Gracie will point out the red light, which will tell, which tells you what kind of girl she is. Uh, and they stop, and there's nobody there at the light. By the way, uh, yeah. But uh, and then you know we see Wang and uh, his girl make out. She's like, "Oh, isn't it nice?" He's all, and Jack's kind of disgusted by it. He's like, "Yeah, <laughs> terrific." <laughs> Lights. You green. know what's funny. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny as well like all this stuff that was going on underground you almost kind of assume when they get back to the surface it'll be nighttime but it's like just broad daylight it's a really strange transition yep but that's just that's the kind of world that they were in like everything was just removed from reality it was you know it was foggy even when they were in chinatown it was foggy uh but you know what that's how the town is if you've ever lived in san francisco you can go to one half of it and it is draped in a mysterious fog and then it'll be sunny two miles later but yeah. there'll be poop on the streets everywhere that's yeah, and it's not and it's not from dogs either not from dogs not from dogs so what yeah they make, it back. they make it back they're celebrating our heroes are triumphant um we got uh you know eddie is hooked up with a girl with margo and um and then, of course, Wang gets his uh, his wife uh, to be, uh, and um, Egg is his his mission is complete. Apparently, he was there the whole time trying to defeat Lil Pan, and he promised himself a long vacation. Jack says, "Why don't you visit the motherland?" And he's all, "Jack, oh, China is always in my heart wherever I go." And then he kind of he takes off into the fog. And then um, Jack Burton is fucking Jack Burton at the end. This is what's so fucking great. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, he's like, uh, 
So should I give up this? You know, I'm a rich man now. He, he got uh, what? $3,000. He's like, I'm a rich man now. I can give this all up and uh, settle down. She's like, Gracie's like, I couldn't have that on my conscience, but if you put an extra room in the truck, I might come with you. And he goes, yeah, but I tend to wear on people after time, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, Oh my God, I've used that line before <laughs> <laughs> so many times. It's uh, like, it's not you. It's me. But yeah. really it is you. Yeah. Oh, it's so great. But he, but he does say, I'll think about it. And they're like, aren't you going to kiss the girl? And he's all, Nope. <laughs> yeah it just like how many how many screenplays would have the balls to do something like that loved it he says goodbye to wang and he's like we shook the pillars of heaven didn't we wang yeah we <laughs> did um no horse shit jack no horse shit so he he takes off in the he puts the sunglasses on at night takes off in the fog and he's right back in that truck uh and oh i forgot yeah i I don't know the last. I should know the last lines by heart, but I don't. And then, um, so he's, he's talking about like, what, what do you do when the 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 you know the skies are falling and the earth is quaking and the pillars of heaven shake? Yep. You look that son of a bitch right in the eye and you say, "I can take it." Right. And uh, we pan down to the uh, pork chop express, and then that uh, random beast is there, uh, and it's such an eighties movie. A Twilight Zone ish ending uh, that it was perfect, and that's how it ends. And you, you know, that's what I want to ask uh, the the everybody in the chat: what happens next? What happened next? Well, they did end the movie with the beginning, right? With that, like they're they're searching for Jack Burton for probably for a court case. I don't know what. Uh, I guess Egg didn't go on his vacation, right? So. Obviously, some charges were were brought up or something, or there there's at least an in inquiry, right? There's an inquiry going along, and they're looking for Jack Burton. So, what do you did he die? I think the beast ate him. You think the beast ate him? Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think it's a perfect stinger to end the movie, isn't it? Uh, right. People are saying Jack and the Demon team up for a series of adventures like Smokey and the Bandit. <laughs> yeah, so <it's> Jack <laughs> and the Demon. Oh, well, it didn't look like, you know, it could have killed Gracie when it had a chance. Maybe it was just uh, subjugated. Maybe it just wants a home. You know? Yeah, that, maybe. It, yeah, it was free now. It was free to make its own life for itself. And it eventually became an insurance salesman in Sacramento. Oh, what do you find out? It's like this really hot chick that was cursed or something like that yeah <laughs> fucking win-win win-win uh i mean honestly like with this movie i i just i had an absolute blast watching it you know it's it's one of those films that i could watch anytime and still enjoy it you know i i think it's it's immensely fun it's immensely quotable it's immensely rewatchable and there's so few movies that you can say that about and yeah, with this one, it's just fun from beginning to end. There's there's no point in this movie where you think, oh, God damn, hurry it up a little bit, or, you know, this is really dragging or anything like that. Like, every moment of it was just enjoyable. Yep. And I think it's just that that very rare combination of great writing, great direction, great casting. Pff, man, like, Big Trouble in Little China is just one of those films that will just endure, I think. Yep, I was – Cloud Nine – after watching this movie, it was, it wasn't the first time I watched it, but the second time I watched it, I just stayed in the theater. I did. And, and, uh, back then people didn't give a shit that much. I, you know, I went out, went to the bathroom, came back, they were cleaning up the theater and I just sat there until it started up again and watched it again. Uh, cause, uh, yeah, it's, it's like, it's like a happy place. Um, and, you know, this is the kind of stuff we're asking for when it, you know, not every piece of entertainment has to be like this, of course, but like the stuff that should be like this, like Falcon and Winter Soldier and other things, it, this is what it should be. It should be something we could all talk about that doesn't bring up anything that's going on in the world right now. Uh, it, it's just pure escapism when, when Hollywood was meant to entertain and that's when it does the most good. 
It does the most good when it does stuff like this because it's a bunch of people to coming together, uh, you know, on, on a fucking live stream talking about a 30 year old movie that stood the test of time. That wasn't even that big of a hit when it came out. Right. Uh, this thing is it, the love for this thing has grown over time. But when it came out, it wasn't like this massive, massive hit. Uh, I don't even know what the critics thought about it. I, I didn't care at the time, but. Uh, no, I, I, I don't know. I, I, like you say, I know it wasn't a big box office hit. And it, it, apparently it's really soured John Carpenter on like the studio system. And then he kind of went independent after that. Yeah. Um, so kind of an interesting one. I think they really rushed it out as well because they were they were competing with various other movies. Um, but yeah, like, you know, we've got like 3,000 people watching this stream. And it just shows you the, the amount of like uh, goodwill this film has. You know that so few other movies have. I mean, it's 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 really like a, an eighties thing. Like the, these classics from back then, you just don't get films like that anymore. Like people aren't going to look back on our current era of movie making um, and look back on it fondly because there's just nothing there that's got that kind of charm to it. No, what are going to be the classics? I mean, honestly, one of the classics is probably is going to be Joker. And if you think about, it, I mean, Joker is great, but it's like it's a remake practically of another classic movie i mean really really well done like an amazingly well done but uh yeah originality is gone and that's this thing is pure original well it, it's original in the way that it crosses genres right it, it crossed uh, every genre it could uh and that I, I that's and that's something they didn't do a lot back then they didn't like hey let's do a horror comedy adventure ghost story you know and, yeah. I, and that's that's what Ghostbusters was too, and that's why it was so popular. And we're, we're going to play around with like who the protagonist really is, and yep, you know, just you know, do these 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 clever little things, but do it subtly. Um, and you know, when I first watched this movie um, when I was a kid, like I could have been more than ten years old when I first saw it on TV. Like I didn't get it at all. I didn't get that you know Jack wasn't really the the hero of the story. Um, and it's only later that you you kind of pick up on that and you just think, oh, that, that was some smart writing there that they did with that. And, you know, they did it in a way that's not obvious. It doesn't beat you over the head with it. But when you take some time to step back and really look at how the, the script is constructed, you, you really get it. And you think, ah, oh, OK, that that took a real bit of finesse to balance all those different things and, and make it work like that. And damn, yeah. yeah, it's great. I don't know how he did it. I, I that's. It's 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 a lost art at this point. It's a lost art, and and yeah. even even the horrific the song at the end, you know, which was sung by John Carpenter. Yeah. <laughs> Big trouble. A little China. It just fits perfectly with it. It fits with the tone of the movie a hundred percent. Um, and it, yeah, this is this is, uh, you know, going back to the point you made about when movies were just joyous and fun, and uh, you know, they they didn't feel the need to take political sides or anything like that you know i just reviewed the rocketeer uh, oh. on my second channel and uh, again another movie that's just it, it i left that film like when the credits rolled i just felt really good i just felt really happy and and like buzzing about like everything and it, it's got that effect on you it's a feel-good movie and so mo so few movies are like that now joe johnston captain america first avenger damn good movie too by the way yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, Spielberg protege, one of the, I mean, many that are out there, but like the one guy who can, like, I think truly capture Spielberg. Um, completely underrated director. Great fucking movie. I, have you ever read the comics they were based on, the Dave Stevens comics? The art in those I, is unbelievable. No, I, I've not read them. Like, I did a bit of research when I was just making my review, and I love that that style that kind of uh, steel steampunky like art deco 1930s style like it's so cool like it's so awesome to look at um and when i was watching the movie just things like the the, the rocket pack that um that cliff wears it's just a great prop like it's chrome it's sleek it's elegant it's streamlined it just looks so fucking cool man it is the, the mass yeah everything about it is 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 uh is retro and fucking cool and uh yeah they uh they brought it back they made uh, the rocketeer a little girl in a cartoon 
So uh, of course, of course, they did. Yeah, I yeah. just hope they never remake the actual movie live action because, yeah, guaranteed, like the, the Rocketeer will now be a, a black woman. You know, oh, that's yes, fighting against depression I or something. That, I think that was actually rumored. I think that was actually rumored. Uh, who's going to be a period piece for somehow? No, it's such a, the comics were, there's not a ton of them, but if you go back and uh, they're not super expensive folks, or you can get trades of uh, the complete, like Dave Stevens uh, Rocketeer. Those are good, good comics. He, his, his art is uh, for one, Betty, you know, he was a big Betty page fan, right? And she, uh, she's in basically in the comic and it, the art is incredible. Absolutely incredible. I did. Uh, I, I mentioned it as well, like uh, Jennifer Connelly in that movie. Oh, fuck, man! Like, there, there's, there's so few actresses that look like that now that have got that kind of classic, elegant beauty about them. Um, and it, it's such a shame. Like, we just, we kind of miss that now. Like, what you get on screen now is just, um, it, it's trying so hard to be like edgy and punky and and in your face, and it just. Nah, it doesn't do it at all. No. No. Again, you're we're talking about an era, and that was a that was a Disney movie, right? Rocketeer. Yes, it was. Movie. Yeah, it was a Disney movie. Uh, an actual Disney movie that I can like. Um, yeah. yeah, and they and of course they haven't brought him back. Uh, no, I think uh, the innocence is lost. Uh, now we we have writers out there, and I've been I've. This is one of the things I was complaining about the most at the comic shop many moons ago is I saw the nihilism and the postmodernism creeping in there. Um, I definitely, I didn't know at the time it was postmodernism. I knew it was nihilism. No, I just think everything was just, everybody's got to be undone. Everybody's got to be deconstructed. Uh, and that, that shit's easy to do. It's easy to do after years and years of constructing the hero you know what? Maintain it. Go back and write a heroic story. And it, they did occasionally. I just reviewed the comic with As um, Kingdom Come. That's a fucking awesome story. And it's a heroic story. Uh, it is at the end. Um, and I, I would just love to see a return to that. Uh, once in a while. It doesn't have to be in everything. And it doesn't mean you have to make everything uh, you know, the, you always hear about you know Superman, right? Superman's a big boy scout. Bullshit. Bullshit. You just don't know how to write Superman. There's a lot of people who who still do, uh, but aren't given access. And Hollywood doesn't want to make that stuff right now. They, they, they are not interested in entertaining us anymore, which is such a bummer because uh, I would fucking line up for days for something like Big Trouble. Don't remake Trou Big Trouble, though. They yeah, yeah please people. never do. Oh, uh, rock. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've always believed like, you know, you can absolutely have stories that have real nuance and depth and, and um, you know, characters that are conflicted. They've got lots of shades to them. Um, you know, they're, they're not strictly good or evil. All that stuff, that's fine. But sometimes as well, people just cry out for, like, good old-fashioned heroism and characters that you really look up to. Um, and it, it's not that much to ask. You can give that to them occasionally. Um, and just let them enjoy themselves, like feel good movies that you just, it's almost like that's not allowed anymore. You're not allowed to feel good. You're not allowed to enjoy yourself at the films. You you always have to be like lectured about something. Well, yeah, look, look at the, uh, look at the, the Oscars, right? Even Bill Maher was complaining about the Oscars. He, he, you know, I, I, I hadn't heard of a single movie that came out and honestly it's because of the coof, but like, all the movies are about some kind of suffering. Yeah. That's all it is. It's some kind of suffering. And it's like, all right, I get it. Fine. But like once in a while, uh, try to have a little fun or, you know, or nobody's going to watch your shit anymore. Like, we're, uh, like people are sick of it, to be honest with you. And, uh, you know, uh, that's why the MCU should be big trouble in little China. It should never be something that uh for especially for our main heroes should be i don't know uh being a folk or or getting into anything more than adventure and fun and telling a good story i don't think you really need uh, the falcon and winter soldier is not going to change anybody's mind on any issue other than 
I'm really bored with the MCU and I'm not going to watch it anymore. But, uh, th and that's just my opinion. Some people might like it, but this is what it should be. And if it did this, it would be successful. And that's what it was in the beginning. That's what it was in the beginning. And it was only, it's only the last few years where things have gotten really, really bad. I mean, it's been creeping in for a while, but yeah. uh, for something like this to pop up again and it'd be like an original story, uh, it'd be a miracle at this point. I don't know if you can make it these days because everything's made by committee. Well, I mean, you know, think about it this way. Like sometimes I feel like entertainment needs to counterbalance what we're going through in real life. And so for all of us, you know, the last year or so has been a bit of a shitty time, you know, from the coup for, or, you know, upheavals, you know, a um, lot of social unrest, whatever it might be, like, it's been kind of a difficult period. And so you kind of want to escape from that when you, when you enjoy your entertainment. That's the whole point of it. It's escapism for most people. Uh, and so... That was what exactly like you said, the MCU was so good at. It provided you with just fun, lighthearted escapism from all of that. And it was just stories of superheroes doing cool things. Great, you know. But it, it's really embraced this whole shit that we just can't escape from every fucking minute of every day. We have to be bombarded with this messaging and this this lecturing. And even the MCU is now doing it. And it's just so disheartening. It's like, can't yeah. you just give us a fucking break for like one minute? Yeah, they can't. I mean, that's what I, that's why I like doing these things with you. Now we were just talking about it before the show. It's like, uh, you know, I, we're going to review Falcon and Winter Soldier and it's not like, it, okay. It's not like it's going to a salt mine or anything, but you know, it's, it's shit has just not been good lately. And I saw part of nobody which was, uh, I'll watch the, like, starting out fucking great. Like, it sucks that I had to stop watching it, but I was falling asleep. I was very tired. But, uh, you know, there are there is some good stuff out there, and it's nice to hit it. But, man, lately, the stuff I usually like and usually like has just been uh, drab and not a lot of fun and boring, you know? Yeah. <laughs> WandaVision wasn't great. Nope. That's for sure. And it started out with such high hopes. You know, I, I watched it and I thought, oh, wow, this is really quite interesting and creative and different. Uh, and then like three episodes in, it started to go down a very predictable path. And it's, uh, you started to realize, oh, OK, there's there's really not that much to this. But maybe they'll pull it out in the, the finale. Maybe there'll be some big revelation that will put this in a different context. No, no, it's just it's your standard like Marvel shit with like a sky beam and people fighting each other in the air and, and all that um, and really fucked up like you know morality to all of this where we're supposed to empathize with this woman that's taken an entire town hostage no like she absolutely doesn't deserve sympathy <coughs> no no but do you have any idea what she sacrificed critical drinker she sacrificed so much and yeah. then, uh to give you back the things that she stole from you in the first place because she got a bit sad one day. She got yeah, fuck off. Out. You know, yeah. feel your feelings don't trump like reality, I'm afraid. And that's that's what that show is. It's awful. And again, I think the morality of Falcon and the Winter Soldier is equally terrible. You know, it's fine to kill people if you feel sad because like you you know, they're trying to take away the things that you were unjustly given in the first place because half the world's population got taken away. You know, now they're back and you have to make way for them again. Like, no, like you don't deserve that stuff. The the, yeah. the, the way they're trying to present the, the, the villain of this story as being a hero is awful. Absolutely awful. Oh, it's... Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, dude. When, when Sam sat down and said, uh, you know, when Bucky... Uh, yeah, th yeah, and this one sticks in my cross. Well, I've said it quite a bit, but I'm going to repeat it again. So, fuck it. Um, you know, when they were talking about Carly and Bucky's like, she's no different than Zemo. And, and Sam goes, no, her motivation is different. She just killed three people and, and seriously injured and burned 11 others, including kids. But her motivation was okay because yeah. she's, you know, cute Carly. Um, and none of that shit happens here. See, all we want is a clear good guy and bad guy once in a while once in a while you can throw in some uh you know greek tragedy shit and it can be the dad or something like that sure no problem but this was like 
hey, um, we're going to take you on a fun little ride for an hour and a half. Uh, hope you hope you enjoy it. And, uh, you know, everybody walks out with a smile on their face. And then, you know what? Then you end up talking about the movie 30 years later or whatever, however, however long it's been. When 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 the when the movie came out and after it came out, I doubt John Carpenter thought people would still be talking about it. I doubt the studio would be. I doubt any of the producers would based on the reaction they got, they were probably like, shit, when well, we thought we made something good, but I guess it'll, you know, just kind of just fade away. And no, we're still talking about it. They're making toys on it. They make, you know, they make games, they make action figures, and yeah, it's still viable. Just don't remake it. Yeah, yeah, please. It's it's fine. You can't you can't make this movie better. Like it is, it's genuinely one of those films where I just think the casting, the writing, the direction, the set design, everything fits perfectly with what they were trying to do. You can't make Big Trouble in Little China any better than what it was back in 1986. Uh, and yeah, I'm happy for it to stay as it is. And yeah, like you say, it's it's movies like this that stick with you because there was real heart and thought and um, and creativity put into them not always a huge budget but you didn't always need it and you know scarcity really like um you know brings out the creativity in people because that's what that's what you need to get by with it um and and so that's why these kind of movies always stick with us you know and i just don't think you get that nowadays because you've got all the the budgets and the you know the the computer animation that you could ever want. You can make your wildest dreams come true and make it look, you know, photorealistic, which is great, but it doesn't really inspire creativity. No. And you know, it, nowadays, yeah, like everyone's trying to be a political lecture for you. Yeah, I mean, how often do you walk out of a like when I walked out of this movie? When I walk out of a movie that I'm inspired by, especially when I was a kid. Uh, like uh, the first thing I wanted to go home and do was, uh, you know, you know, I went home from this one and I, I drew a bunch of pictures of, of Jack Burton. I was just inspired to make some art on the thing I just loved, or I wanted to go out and buy the soundtrack. I wanted an artifact from this, uh, piece of art that I liked so much. I wanted to, I wanted to own a piece of it. I was inspired to do that and not, not, I mean, not much does that for me these days where it inspires me to like want an artifact, look more into it. Or, uh, I can't remember, you know, the Joker was probably the last movie where I walked out with my mind kind of blown, um, and, uh, wanting to learn more about it. And, uh, God, you know, the setting I got to see it in, which I was lucky to do. I was in New York and I saw it at the Elmo draft house and fuck, it was so perfect to see the Joker in New York. Although I did walk through metal detectors before I went and saw the movie, which was weird, um, which we'll probably have to do forever now or get tested. Uh, but yeah, it's, it, that, that happens so rarely now, even from a TV show. And Iron, like Iron Man did that with me. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I got that like feeling of like, Oh man, I want to be like Tony Stark. I want to, fucking like i want to invent things i want to do things i want to have a cool fucking lab where i just build shit look i even got a and this is really fucking rare for me i got like an iron man figurine it's quite oh nice. wow. there you go awesome See? i like yeah. that one i mean how often do movies do that now but they i mean it wasn't that long ago where they were where they were god iron man's like 10 years old now dude how more than that it's like 13 years old it was 2008 that's right yeah damn uh yeah like the mcu has been around for a long time and i do start to wonder like are people just getting a little bit tired of superhero movies have we reached that point after 20 years where we're now starting to feel we've done everything and we've we've kind of bring we've brought every you know interesting character to the fore now i don't know uh we might be there i mean there's still plenty of marvel characters to to adapt that would keep the 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 thing going forever i mean the comics went for decades and decades and decades and decades it's over now but uh if they would have stuck with the script it could have kept on going so yeah if the mcu adapts the x-men and the fantastic four right they can last a long time if they don't they're dead Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and and the and the the audience will know. The audience will know if something deviates from the source material, even if the audience doesn't know the source material. But the audience knows what the Fantastic Four looks like. You know, 
Uh, but we do need if if entertainment's going to survive, we need shit like Big Trouble in Little China desperately, desperately, <laughs> desperately. At least once every couple of years, something that's almost. Uh, or at least in the spirit of it doesn't. I mean, nothing can be as good as this movie. It's damn near perfect. But you don't know what I mean, guys, gals. Yeah. We need something fun once in a while that we can all enjoy. I, I think, uh, yeah, like I said to you before, I think the real spirit that you get from movies like this is irreverence and just we're making the movie we want to make and fuck you. We don't feel like we need to have any kind of social conscience. We don't need to like put forward any messaging or anything. We're just here to have fun. We're yep. telling a fun story, and we don't care if it's offensive or anything like that. Oh, man, so many people just want that. They, they, you know, it's something that's really common to you when you're young, but, like, it never leaves you. It never quite leaves you. And that just whenever you see films like this, it just gets you. And that's what people latch on to. And, God, Hollywood could make an absolute fortune if they had the balls to just make movies like this. And that's And it's the balls. And it's because Hollywood has become so corporate now that we don't have, I mean, we miss those big badass producers who, I mean, could have been horrible people, but they, you know, they got a lot of shit done, you know, like the Bruckheimers, Bruckheimers of the world. And, you know, even, you know, Spielberg's of the world, he was producing a bunch of stuff. But if you look at the qual uh, the quality that we got in the eighties compared to the quantity of movie we were getting, cause they were making what a 10th of the amount of entertainment in the eighties, which was considered by the way, if uh, extravagant, the eighties were considered completely extravagant. Now compared to now it would be, you'd laugh, uh, but they were, but the amount of actual quality films that we got based on how many they made is astronomical compared to, to now, mm -hmm. you know, it, and, and you know what? Nobody in Hollywood fucking all they say is, well, that w it was a different time and blah, blah, blah. And we've moved on progress, progress. But has anybody like ever stopped and ma maybe really gave it a good think? Like, why did we produce better shit? Cause we have, that's a fact now. Why did, so we are regressing. It, uh, Hollywood is regressing. Why did they produce better shit before? Maybe they should give a good think about it and come up with a way to maybe fix it. Yeah. Or yeah. just blame the fan. They could just blame the fan. That's easier. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, the fan base is toxic, obviously. And if you don't like the, the garbage that we've produced for you, then you are a toxic fan. You know, that, that <clears throat> that's the mentality of it. But yeah, exactly. Like, it, it's... I, I wish there was more producers in Hollywood that still had that mentality they had back in the 80s and 90s, where they... they were willing to just take risks. Everyone was fucking off their mind on coke. Yes. It didn't matter. Like they were just green light movies based on what sounded good, and that was fine. That 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 resulted in so many awesome films. Um, and yeah, what we have now is just it's dreck. You know, I I when I see a new movie now, I don't get excited about it. I just think, how bad is it going to be? That's the kind of mindset that we have nowadays because you know it's going to be. There's rare examples where it's, uh, it bucks the trend, like Joker was great, and you know things like that, like Ford versus Ferrari was a good film. But like it's so rare nowadays where you just really enjoy yourself in a film. Um, yeah, I, I guess some people got that from. Uh, I didn't see it. You reviewed it uh, from Kong and Godzilla. They just. You know, got some monsters beating the shit out of each other for a little while, and I guess that yeah, it was all right. Was yeah, right? yeah, it was it was dumb as fuck, and it made absolutely no sense. But um, you know, if you just want to see monsters beating the shit out of each other, yeah, it's fine. But it's, it's gonna it's gonna deliver you some of those like you know just spectacle thrills. And things don't need to be dumb. What you just said, that Big Trouble is a smart movie. It's I mean Jack Burton is a big dumb chad of a guy but it, it's a smart movie and the, it's all about delivery it's not like you know what's what makes the quote so fucking good is their simplicity and their timing their comedic timing yeah uh, like i love when um uh, uh you know i can deliver it well but when uh when wang's uncle um you know describes what lopan is to to jack he's all he's he's a dream 
his atoms are spread across the ethereal plane or something like that. And he goes, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about? It's so fucking good. Um, yeah. When the guy's like, China is here, Mr. Burton. And, you know, he gives this big description about how like they, they brought all their conflicts and stuff with them. And he's like, what, what does that mean? China is here. I don't know what the hell that means. <laughs> and he goes uh, back to arguing with a fucking woman on the switchboard, like with his yep. insurance. <laughs> no, no. My my favorite soundbite, as a matter of fact, I had this soundbite in my computer way back when I when I did auto when I sold auto parts down the street here. Uh, I had control of the PA system, so I'd always do a you know when Jack could you know hit the horn, he's all come on, what the hell? I I had that on <laughs> rotation at my dealership to the point where they got sick of me for it. But uh, I'm gonna put that in my soundboard. But it's like good shit. It's perfectly delivered fun lines but it's a smart story uh it, it's it's the way it's crafted the, uh, and the way it's paced uh not wasting any fucking time not expecting your audience to be a dumb shit and they don't uh, they they treat the audience with respect they give you enough information you just have fun and it's it's crazy that we even have to talk about this stuff now because like i said earlier like watch your average cw show they'll show you something and then explain it the next like somebody will do something and then somebody will explain the thing that that person just did and you're like oh we're oh we're all dumb now That's we, are. we really are and i think a lot of it relies um, i think a lot of it is based on this problem that we have now where you've got like five million channels you can choose from and so you come into any show there's a good chance that people have just channel hopped their way into what you're showing yeah. And so you almost have to recap exactly what's going on every five minutes because you might have people that have never watched this before that have just stumbled upon it. Uh, and it doesn't rely on people being invested in it. It doesn't rely on people paying attention to it. It's appealing to people who are hopping their way through different channels while fucking around on their iPhone and looking at their iPad or whatever. Um, and, you know, their brains in like five different places all at once. That's that's the kind of audience that you're trying to appeal to now. And this is why I really miss movie theaters as much as people bitch about like, oh, you know, guy was eating popcorn behind me. And it was really fucking loud. You know, there's just something really good about switching your phone off, going into the theater and just watching a movie and not doing anything else apart from that, not paying attention to anything else except the film in front of you you know i hate this idea that we should just be doing it at home because when you're at home there's a million different things that's always going on there's there, you know there's stuff in the kitchen there's people delivering stuff like your phone's there like you're always going to be distracted you know it's just nice to pay attention to a movie and just give that your hundred percent yeah and, and i was able to do that this morning thankfully not get interrupted once just sat there and watched the damn movie. It was so nice. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I had my headphones on. I put headphones on, like nice headphones, so I just can kind of turn off the world. Had my four cups of coffee, fired up Big Trouble in Little China. It's fucking, man, there's not much better on this planet. I can think of a couple things that I won't discuss here because I'm a gentleman. <laughs> Sorry, this isn't a family show. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> it was good stuff. Nice man. Do you know? Uh, did you know there is a steel book uh Blu-ray of this with a uh with a seven inch purple vinyl soundtrack? I did oh, not shit. know that. Oh my god. Uh the that, sound yeah, that's fucking awesome, dude. I'm a big is, that is a thing of beauty. I am into my steel book Blu-rays. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I, I highly recommend any John Carpenter soundtrack. If you're, if you're a true eighties connoisseur fan or anything, you have to own John, John Carpenter soundtracks. Cause his, his, that's the soundtrack of the eighties, uh, which was largely like a Casio keyboard, <laughs> but it was really fucking good. You know, it's just, it's moody and, ah, I love his soundtracks. I I'm, I was a huge fan of Christine. I know it's not everybody's favorite you know, movie, but I loved what he did with Christine. Absolutely. I remember this. I remember the soundtrack for the thing being really atmospheric, really oh. creepy, and and you know, there's a lot of discordant kind of uh, keyboard stuff. It was just really, yeah, really interesting stuff. 
Uh, but yeah, that's it kind of, that. That's what um, kind of 80, 80 soundtracks were for the longest time. And I, I don't know what what set the precedent for that. I mean, we were just getting more digital music anyway. But uh, yeah, you know, maybe Blade Runner. I don't know. I I guess I'm pron- mispronouncing. It's I call him Vangelis, but I guess it's Vangelis. I heard that recently. I, I always said Vangelis, but I always said Vangelis too. But yeah, I just I just see it written down. I never like heard anyone say it, so you know, I just assumed it was that. I I do love Vangelis or Vangelis or whatever you want to call them. Like their soundtracks, just there's like a, a kind of dreamlike quality to them. But yep. like they're so, they're just so good to listen to. They they make any movie seem epic. Somehow. No, there's a there's a soundtrack that uh, I I uh, have the for a movie I've never seen. Uh, fourteen ninety or is it forty? It was the the year of conquest. Conquest uh, the, of Paradise. Yeah, the Chris Columbus, uh, the Christopher yeah. Columbus movie that I never saw. <laughs> but yeah. soundtrack. Yeah. Oh, that soundtrack is epic. Fucking it really so is. Good. Because they, they did the soundtrack for Blade Runner as well, I think. Um, yep, yep. Yeah, another, another beautiful soundtrack that's just haunting. That, you know, it's it wasn't you. available forever. It wasn't. Uh, it was something that uh, we had to get here in the states. There was a a, 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 a rip off version. It well, was some other band did it, and um, not band, but orchestra. The American something orchestra. I used to know it off the top of my head. But then they re-released it, or they released the proper version. There was a version you could get out there, bootleg, but the, they re-released a proper version in 94. And I played that thing. I, I worked in a record store in 94. I played that thing over and over and over again. I sold the shit out of that soundtrack. Uh, <laughs> I did. I did. Uh, and uh, it was. It's. I still listen to it. It's one of the... It's. It it's every uh, uh, it's it's got dialogue from the movie in it, but it's so uh, beautifully atmospheric. It puts mm-hmm. you in a mood, nice chill mood. Yeah. yeah. Um, we we've got uh, we've got quite a few super chats here. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how, how much time you've got, but I was going to try and work through some of them. If that's okay. cool with you, man. Let's do it. No problem. All right. Let's see what we got here. Uh, so Danny Boy here says, "Remember the '90s arcade game X Men." Uh, remember the scream Colossus made using his mutant power. Sorry, the scream that Colossus made using his mutant power. Yes. Please give me and Brad Perkins your best Colossus roar. God, I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, uh, I, I don't think I can. Epi- I don't think I can. Yeah. Uh, give Sorry, you I that kind of epic roar. We have to build up to. I'm feeling kind of mellow right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's what happens when you watch a good movie. You're just like, oh, I'm happy. Uh, I'll move on to some others in that I've case. This, uh, this game, so uh, for some reason, it's set to a different language. I've never bothered to change it. So it'll start out in English, and then they'll start speaking Japanese for some reason. Wow. And all kinds of uh, battle cries in that one. Nice. Yeah. I, it's one of my dreams to have an arcade cabinet in my house. Uh, you, you can have them built now. I mean, if you don't want to get a vintage, vintage one, you can have one made probably for a lot cheaper. And yeah, you, that's true. As long just, as it's still got the CRT screen and stuff, uh, I'd be I'd be all right with that. Nightmare. That is my third one, and I'm not even going to... I don't want to tell you how much I've spent on that thing at the comic store. <laughs> don't. I won't ask. Oh, um, oh. Jester of Roanoke says, Great movie. It makes me miss Starlog Magazine. Oh, uh, Chuxenhausen says two point chat. Sorry, two part chat. Mister Drinker, about a week ago on the Real BBC, I mentioned to Az and Gary that I was hoping you three would do a live cast review of the movie Rudy, starring Samwise Gamgee. I only ask because of two reasons. I turned thirty four last week, and also it's such a brilliant underdog story, which I'm sure you'll all enjoy watching. I'll go away now. Uh, Rudy, I don't, I've never heard of that movie. Have you? Oh yeah, well, Rudy's a football movie. It's an American football movie uh, that stars Sean Astin, and it's about an unlikely guy who uh, was this little guy who wanted to play football, and and it, it's it's a story of perseverance, and great perseverance can come with great perseverance can come great reward, and it's a fucking feel good make you. But you got to know about American football a little bit. Mm. Uh, but it's not, 
it, it's more of a story about a guy like overcoming the odds. It's really fucking good. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we could do something like that. Um, Joel Rice says, Hey, Will and Gary, throwing my uh, super chat in early so I can play Deep Rock Galactic while I lurk around here. I love this movie so much. Nice one, man. Um, Unhinged Entertainment says, Drinker, Nerdrotic, and the greatest movie ever created. I'm moist. moist. <laughs> Good to know. Uh, Shark Dentures says, One of the most quotable movies ever. Love it. Yeah, I think we both agree on that one. Uh, Sporking News Podcast says, A movie that sums up the 80s perfectly, and it has Asian representation. It really does, yeah. Um, um, yeah. Obviously. Based very heavily around Chinese mysticism. Like we were saying earlier, I think they probably could have done with a few more Asian actors in the battle scenes, but you know, maybe they just didn't have the availability or the budget. Um, what's the next one? Yeah, Stephen Lanuto says, Hail Drinker, Hail Gary. We need a dramatic remake with Az as Jack Burton, Drinker as Egg Shen, and Gary as Lopan. I'll make millions. <laughs> Sorry, it'll make millions. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe billions so i have to be i have to be egg shen so you you've got to be low pan i can be low pan <laughs> ah the 16 yeah. back yes what's in an egg wind fire all that kind of thing all right here's to the uh, army and the navy and the battles they have won <laughs> to the american colors the colors that never run May the wings of liberty never you lose a feather. feather. Fuck okay. me. Shark Dentures says, uh, what do OT Star Wars, Princess Bright, and uh, Big Trouble in Little China have in common? They are all movies that must never be rebooted or remade ever on penalty of death. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Horrific death. Not just guillotine, something quick injection no it's got to be like scaphism iron maiden uh ants something like that yeah yeah burn to death something like that um i would add back to the future into that mix never ever ever re remake that just leave it alone props to robert zemeckis and bob gale for being instrumental in that movie never being remade they uh yeah. and, and uh that is good that is creative integrity yeah, which is something you don't see much nowadays in Hollywood. Um, Doug Keller says, now we need to drink a live stream on the 80s classic Cobra with Razor Fist. Ah, and also from Doug Keller says, Drinker, would you ever do a live stream on the Bad Boys movies? Uh, yeah, I probably would, actually. The, the second one I, I really enjoyed. <laughs> I don't know why. It's goofy and it's schlocky and it's over-the-top action, but it's fucking awesome. It's just yeah. Will Smith at, at his best. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, I you know what I used to I used to complain about Michael Bay with along with everybody else, but uh, I've completely come around on him. I mean, he's he's not artistic in any way, but he's at least fun. At least yeah. he can have fun. You know, he's fun and he's not woke in the slightest. So not slightest. Yeah, so it makes for for good movies. Funny that. Um, Miles Mulholland says it's all in the reflexes. Hail Drinker and Gary, brilliant movie, couldn't be made today. You guys should do a Princess Bride next. Yeah, people keep talking about that, man. Yeah. That's an interesting one. Um, Doug Keller, still waiting on that Conan live stream with Az. It'll come, it'll come. Um, Nick Craig says, David Lopin is still one of the most entertaining villains on the silver screen. <laughs> he is awesome. Yeah, you, got, you saw an actor... Like just relish in a role. Yeah. I think he's at his best when he's like crotchety old man low yep. man in, in a yep. wheelchair. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> uh Grand Muff Twerkin says, Drinker, have you seen the perfect weapon? One of the best martial arts movies out there with fantastic realistic martial arts action. You know, it's interesting you say that. I, the name strikes a chord, but I can't remember anything about it, but I feel like I've seen it. It's it's a weird one, but yeah, it sounds familiar. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Have I seen that? For martial arts movies, though, I I love the two raid movies. 
Yeah, the raid like, movies are ooh, dude. Fantastic. Um and and you know what? I didn't even know I, I hadn't seen them until I saw Dread. Right? And then I saw Dread. I'm like, that's when they're, they're oh no, 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 you need to watch Raid. Yeah, so, yeah. That that's yeah. next level. Yeah. yeah. The the fights, the choreography, the work that must have gone into that is mind blowing. Um Brad Perkins says Gary and Drinker, you can thank her as curators of cultural curiosities. Thoughts on the long kiss good night. Gina Davis is a legend. I really like it. I liked it too. Uh, good screenplay by Shane Black. Um, Gina Davis is awesome in it. Like she actually looks pretty competent, and Sam Jackson's just tearing up the scenery and loving it. Yep. Yeah, it's a good film. I feel like it wasn't done on a huge budget, and it's a shame. Probably could have done with a little bit more, but otherwise, yeah, I liked it. Uh, th- that that um, that era is a pretty good era for films. It's when they tried to, when they went back. It's one of those times where they went back because things were getting all bloated and everything, and we got like these cool slick action movies. And uh, yeah, that one I thought it was going to suck when I went in to see it in the theater. I was pleasantly surprised when I walked out. Hmm. Uh, Kristen Delorme says, from a trucker to my favorite YouTubers, cheers. Thanks, man. And that was for five Canadian dollars. Uh, and from Graham Gallagher, a fun drinking game. Take a shot every time Jack Burton asks a question. I'll see you in the ER. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> does ask a lot of questions in this movie. A lot of questions. <laughs> I didn't count, but uh, maybe next time I will. There, There is a super cut that someone's made uh, oh, because when oh. I was when I was looking for footage for my, my review, um, someone was just, you know, they made a video. It's like every time Jack Burton asks a question and it's, it's like 15 minutes long, just everything that he, he says. <laughs> it's like, he just doesn't understand anything that's going on. No, that's brilliant. Uh, Timothy Fitzgerald, big trouble is in my top five. The first movie I ever saw in theaters as a kid, I was old enough to completely remember was uh, six only Star Wars is definitely ahead for me. Uh, yeah. Uh, Skirt God gave me $5, so thanks, man. Um, Bob252 says, Hail Drinker and Nerdrotic. Thank you, Critical Drinker, for calling out The Rocketeer. It was a good superhero movie. Yes. Uh, good, yeah. It was... Um, I always feel like it was made ahead of its time. You know, it... it it yep. was too early for that big superhero wave that came in the early 2000s. Like, if it had come slightly later, it, I feel like it would have done so much better. Plus, it was up against, like, Terminator 2 and Robin Hood and stuff. Like, yep. just massive blockbusters that it couldn't compete with. But, man, I love that film. It's so good. Um, I like the Robin Hood movie. That's, like, a guilty pleasure of mine. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um yeah, when you've got Kevin Costner and Christian Slater pretending to be British, you've you've got a winner right there. Um, Sarah B says, "Hail Drinker and Gary, love listening to the two of you. Sorry, to two of my favorite YouTubers while I work. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thanks for the entertainment. Well, thank, thank you, you Sarah B. Appreciate it. Uh, Craig Lee Williams, sending respect and virtual shots. Thanks, man. Uh, Brad Perkins, remember what old Drinker says at a time like this." Have you paid your dues, drinker? Nah, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. It'll be fine. Thanks, man. That's a good good super chat. Um, Capital Satyr says, Drinker and Gary, you guys are my Hollywood blockbusters. Keep up the great content. Thank you very much. Cheers. Uh, Penis Von Lesbian <laughs> says, Used Cars, Kurt Russell, Bachelor Party, Tom Hanks. Those were the days. They were indeed. Um, Lieutenant Healy says, yeah, I know what you mean. My wife gave it to me for Christmas. <laughs> that's, uh, that's Jack Burton with his tie when he has to take it off in the brothel. I do like when uh, the madam of the brothel says to him, do you want to pay cash or charge? And he's like, nah, cash. I mean, it's not like it's tax deductible, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Man of War 665 says, like I told my last wife, I says, honey, I never drive faster than I can see. <laughs> Besides, it's all in the reflexes. All in the reflexes. Uh, Michael Hansen says, Big Trouble is the archetype of an 80s movie. It absolutely is. 
it's glorious. Uh, what's the next one here? Uh, Boar Legion says Susie Pai, who played Mao Yin, was Penthouse Pet of the Month for January 1981. I didn't know that actually. Uh, what month was that? January. January 1981. Excuse me, guys. I'm going to have to go off for a little while. Wow. <laughs> Please enjoy the. <laughs> I'll be back in like three minutes. It's going to be intense. <laughs> <laughs> no, anyway, sorry. I'm kidding. Uh, but I will look that up after this because I'm interested. Yeah, uh, research. Uh, it's very important for our job. Uh, Roger Moore, the man himself, James Bond, says, Thanks for all the great videos. Thank you, Roger Moore, and thank you for being a good Bond. Damn right. Yeah. Uh, Wormy Spoons says, Drinker Nerdrotic, how's it going, guys? It's going fine for me. How's it going for you, Gary? Uh, good. It's going really good for me. Thanks for asking. Um, I hope everyone's doing great out there. Nice. Uh, Thomas Kelly, you should review the show Alex Ryder. It's put on by IMDb. I think it's Drinker Recommends worthy. Alex Ryder? Is that not like uh, a bunch of YA novels or something? And they made it into a TV show. I, I, I don't, don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not an expert on that, but it does ring a bell. Uh, Egg Shen. <laughs> the, oh, fucking awesome. There's a guy called Egg Shen, Six Demon Bag, and he says... <laughs> <laughs> What a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, I, I, fuck it. I don't even need the super chat. That's awesome by itself. Um, my two favorite YouTubers talking about my favorite flick. Don't even know where all this is going to go this early into the stream. Nevertheless, Thursday made. Cheers, guys. Well, thank you, Egg Shen, Six Demon Bag. Uh, you are awesome. And thank you for, for the generous donation. I really appreciate that, man. Wow. Uh, Furious Zap says, Hollywood needs to revisit fun. Great quote that should be used on a loop. Uh, yeah, very much so. I think that was that was from you, Gary. You you hit the nail on the head there. Um, big gay nerd says, as a gay nerd, it has Kurt Russell all sweaty in a tight tank top and jeans. <laughs> Kim Cattrall and directed by John Carpenter. What more does anyone need? Yeah, exactly. There's something for everyone in this film. A wet Kim Cattrall. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I can dig it. I can yeah. dig it. You know that shot right at the end of the movie when they ask, are you going to kiss her? And she's like, she's leaning against the pillar or something and she just looks beautiful. Oh, man. She's got that take me look and you're like, how does he even like, yeah. I mean, he was married to Goldie Hawn. You know, that was in uh, I, If I had a choice between the two of them back in 1986, oh. I know which one I'd pick. I do too. And it ain't bird on a wire. <laughs> uh, Jonathan Mulryan says, in a time when mankind had lost faith in movie reviewers, up steppeth the drinker. God bless you, sir. Well, thank you. I do my best. Oh, yeah. The uh, movie reviewers are dead. I mean, that's, I think, uh, you know, you and Mahler and a few other people out there, a couple people out there, not many, you know, are the new Siskel and Ebert. Uh, they're, you know, when you when you can go to somebody you can trust. Uh, well, when you know when I'm given, hey, there it is. <laughs> Good detail. Oh, oh my God, what is that? Don't tell me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I really want to shoot it now. <laughs> okay, yeah. Hold on. There you go. I give it a shot. <sighs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> Stop it. You'll miss me. <laughs> hey. Yeah, you never know until you try. You never know, man. People have been asking about your firearm back there. I kept oh, yeah, yeah. about that. Yeah. You got an yeah, Uzi. This, yeah, this isn't real. This is just oh, it's like that's the that, it's not an Uzi. I think that's a Scorpion submachine yeah, yeah. gun or something. Yeah, I don't know. I think yeah. you're right. It's I love how the magazine goes in it and everything. Cool as hell. And then there's, of course, there he is. Oh, man. He's got, the, he's got the tank top. He's got the denim. He's got the awesome hair. Yeah, this thing is badass. Uh, if you can find one for a decent price, which I think you can, it's worth it. If you're a 
God, big trouble stuff goes for money, goes for big money. Even the recent stuff that they made that sold out, like is really hard to find and expensive. I understand why now. A lot of people uh, still look at the movie. The uh, the weapon experts in the chat have said it's a Tech Nine submachine gun. So there we go. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, this is this is not real. This is this is just a, a replica. But it's a nice cult peacemaker, and it's got a good bit of weight to it. Actually, it's proper, you know, proper metal. So feels good. Nice. Anyway, what was the next one? Uh, that went down with a thud. It echoed. It was like, Pfft. yeah, wait, wait, wait. Uh, put it down again. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Astaroth says, Hail Drinker and Gary, here's a couple of surplus bucks since Disney, CBS, etc. Don't seem to want it anymore. Keep up the great work, you two. Thank you very much, my friend, and I appreciate it. I appreciate that. Uh, Gilly writes comics, says, Galactic Rodents of Mayhem hits comic shops on the 24th, sorry, uh, the 28th of April. A throwback to Saturday morning cartoons with Anthro Space uh, Capybaras and a story drink with love. Well, thank you very much. All right. Uh, Louis the Plank says, it's okay. I took something. I can see things no one else can see. <laughs> uh, Justin Johnson says, nah, it'll be fine. It will indeed be fine whenever you've got big trouble to, to keep you company. Yes, that is true. Uh, Freddie Sauce says, I'm convinced that at this point your grand plan is to take a few dollars from me every month or so as I beg for a review of Soldier. You did troopers and crapped on Thunder Force though, so I forgive you. <laughs> um yeah soldier will be done um i think it'll be a live stream rather than a scripted review but uh, i've got a guy who will talk talk through it with me but uh yeah we'll cover soldier for sure uh what's the next one aurora uplinks uh what would it take to review the phantom menace booze yeah lots of booze and lots of money i think because damn that's that's a big undertaking that movie. I, I I do intend to talk about the prequels at some point in some way. I just need to find the right way to tackle them and try and find a way to add something that hasn't already been said because they've been reviewed to death already. So it's a tricky one. Yeah, I agree with that one. i sure you could you could come up with a way. I'm sure you could. I'll, I'll find something. I'll find something. Uh, what's the next one? Bob two five two says Kim Cattrall's first major role was in Porky's. Everyone who saw the movie knew her as Lassie. The Lassie scene in Porky's was the funniest one in a low budget movie. Uh, yep. uh, Stephen Otten says Hail Drinker and Gary, another great movie from the eighties. Joining late network issues, I understand Jack and Wang are on the case. <laughs> they better be. Yeah, uh, they're gonna fix your phone. Um. BOS Harry gave me a super sticker for 20 US dollars, so thank you very much. Uh, Enoch Mammon says, Carpenter's favorite director is Howard Hawks. He based the dialogue and pacing in this film on Hawks' screwball comedies. Gracie Law was in particular based on Rosalind Russell in His Girl Friday. I didn't know that, actually, yeah. so a good bit of information there. Um, Coalescing Tormentum says, For the love of all that is good and awesome, Please tell me you guys have heard of and read the comic books co-written by Carpenter. They were great and told more of Burton's backstory. Also, there were plenty of old Jack Burton's in it as well. Yep. Was, there, was there a comic of this? There is a comic. There was a, shit. They, did a, they did a Snake Plissken Jack Burton crossover too. Oh my God, that would be the most epic thing ever. Yeah. Oh yeah. Damn, I didn't know that. I'm going to have to look that up now. Uh, Stybeck B says, thanks for recommending us the good stuff. Let me recommend something good in return. The Name of the Rose, uh, Invincible and Hell's Reach. I have seen The Name of the Rose. Oh, wow. um, that was a Sean Connery movie from like yep. back in the 80s, I think. Uh, who was the kid in it? It was... Uh... Christian Slater. Christian Slater, yeah. 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 There's... Uh, yeah, there's a really awkward sex scene in it as well that's somehow strangely cool because it's like really honest, unlike the the sort of really scripted stuff you get in most movies. So yeah, it's a good movie actually, um, and I think it's got it's got Ron Perlman in it as well as like some kind of hunchback thing. Yeah, good film. Um, 
Sean Carter says, Gary, check Amazon for action figures. I see some listed. Oh yeah, I've I've got uh, as far as the uh, big trouble ones are. Um, I I don't have the 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 Nika ones. Is it Nika that came out with them? Uh, because every time I looked, they were really expensive, and I'm like, yeah. I mean that that statuette of Jack Burton was just a thing of beauty. Yeah, like this, I can spend a lot of money on for plastic. I, I got I have my limits, but thanks. I'll check out Amazon. Maybe it's cheaper. Um. Boyo Day gave me um, 10. I don't even know what that is. BGN. But uh, whatever it is, thank you, man. I'm just refreshing my super chat list here so I can catch up with myself. Uh, where is it? Just to check, Gary, like, uh, I don't know how much time you have left. I don't want to keep you like waiting or anything like that. But just oh, uh, I could go for another half hour. Easy. Okay, cool. I gotta uh, give me just a second. I'm gonna jump out there. I'm gonna get some uh, more water. My water is all right. No worries, man. I'll I'll pl I'll plow on. Uh, where am I? I'm still going. Still going. Still going. Oh yeah, there we go. Caught up. Uh, so Trenton Quinn says, "I know nothing about this movie, so I'll come back to this after I watch this pronto." Uh, Q and until next time, friends. Exit. <laughs> yeah, watch this fucking film; it'll make your life better. Uh, Boyo Day says, "You guys need to check out the low pan style music video on YouTube if you've missed it. Uh, the best shit ever. Is it like Gangnam Style but low pan? But if so, uh, I'm sold right away." Um, Trenton Quinn says, "Drinker, I love you, buddy, but I'm going to need to borrow your shades with the light coming off your shirt." Lol. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. It's like um, whenever I got a white background on my screen because it's a really big monitor I use here, um, it tends to reflect off my my shirt and my fucking face, and it makes me look like I'm dead. Um, but yeah, I, in retrospect, a white t-shirt wasn't the greatest idea, so I apologize. Uh, Eggshen Six Demon Bag says, "In fact, there's 2,800 people in the chat who love this flick. While I get weird looks from my friends whenever I mention it, tells me I need to find myself a better class of friend." Yeah, come on, man. There's there can't be any people in this world that hate this movie, uh, but you just need to win them over, recruit them. Uh, Norman Michael says, "Hello and greetings from Berlin, Germany. I always love the martial arts stuff in this movie." <laughs> yeah, like I said earlier, like there's a very like stiff, like chop socky style to it, and it's just it fits the tone of the movie perfectly. Uh, Dwayne Cates says, "I'm still waiting for the censored sequel. John Kurt, make it happen. <laughs> we'll see." Uh, Charles Hurst, give me a super sticker. So thanks, man, for twenty dollars. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, the Outcast Creative says, This was the first movie that I ever took 20 friends to for my birthday. Opening night in Leicester Square. Iconic. I uh, hope you got the Pegasus Bridge clips, buddy. I mean, man, like to see this open, open at night, that is fucking cool. Um, I wish I'd been old enough. At the, like, Well, I think I was about two or three years old when this movie came out. So I kind of missed it. But, man, to see it in the cinema would be fucking great. Um AZ Chris says, They Live is my favorite movie. Hail Carpenter. Hail Carpenter, indeed. Uh, he he was he was on fire in the 80s. Uh, Graph This gave me $5 uh, for a super chat, so thanks, man. Um, Puzzled Pelican. Hey, Drinker, hope you and Tatiana are doing well. Yeah, we're, we're back together now after the wow. lockdowns have been eased, so all is well with the world. Wow. Uh, the real monkey rogue says, "What lessons about filmmaking and writing did we learn from all this? Have set up and pay off. Mm -hmm. have, have have characters that are interesting, um, and have a, a story that just is concerned only with just telling a good story and being entertaining. It's it's not too hard. It really isn't. You also have to be talented. Uh, that helps. Um, yeah." But even the most talented get, uh, I mean, creatively cock blocked by producers and their own political uh, intentions. Uh, Digital Demonic Davros says, I have listened to your first two Ryan Drake novels and love it. The narrator does a great job. Well done, Mr. Drinker. Go away now. Well, thank you very much. Um, I just write them. I don't narrate them or anything like that. 
but the guy that they've got is really good at it. So yeah, mm -hmm. I'm pleased yes, that yes. you liked it. Um, SO47 says, always love your content drinker. Best line from the movie, aren't you going to kiss her goodbye? Jack, no. <laughs> it's a very your expectations, you see. Uh, Nick B says, what's in the chat, Egg? Super chat? Yeah, thought so. Good. What do we do? Read it? Yeah, good. Thought so. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Oh man, that was good. Um, Christian Delorme says, "Everybody relax, I'm here." <laughs> Another great line from Jack Burton. It is. Uh, Wormy spoons. Will I believe your books may be being adapted into screenplay? Is that right? And how's it going for you? Um, I've just finished my first screenplay. Uh, yes, that is right. They are being adapted, or at least the first book is, uh, and it's going as well as it can. Um, everything's still locked down in Europe, which is where they're hoping to film most of it. So they're waiting for basically government regulations that are going to give them some kind of framework to, to work off when they actually shoot, because without that, they can't get insurance on it. So we're, we're kind of stuck in a holding pattern until that's relaxed a little oh, bit. Right. Yeah. That's a bummer. Yeah. Um, the mechanist says, my dad pretended to be in a band to sneak into a fancy party. The guard let them right in. He knew nothing about music and made stuff up on the spot. Yeah, that's that's going back to our point earlier about you just have to pretend like you know what you're doing and they'll let you in. Um, another angry hobo says, review wrong turn reboot trailer and movie soon, please. Um, fair news. Um, SO47 says, uh, cool story. A girl I was friends with in high school, her dad worked on the effects for the storm lightning. If so, that's cool as fuck. That is cool as hell. <laughs> uh, Mr. Millennium says, Drinker, I'm working on a creative writing project on orth uh, authorial research, so I wanted to ask what your research process for the Ryan Drake books entailed. Um, okay, so it's a combination of lots of different things. It will be, if I'm going to set it in a specific area, I can bring up Google Maps so that I can actually like walk in that area virtually. Um, you know, if it's a place like Iraq or whatever, I can't really go there myself. If it's somewhere that, um, you know, I can travel to, then I will. Like I've been to DC, I've been to London, all these like places where my books take place, um, you know, doing just generalized research on weapons um like the the organization of like different you know um, groups like the cia or the fsb that sort of thing <clears throat> you can get all that stuff online um and i'm lucky enough to know some people who are in the forces or at least have been at various times in their lives and they've told me some great stories uh about places like afghanistan and iraq so all of those things i was able to work into my books as well so it's a combination of loads of different things um, and it's just, you make use of what you got, I guess. Um, Veteran Redbeard says, Drinker, please cover Boondock Saints. Critics hate it, but it's a great movie. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean... Uh, I would love to do that with you. I'd love hey. that. Hey. Um, uh, i definitely going to have to rewatch it, though, because it's been a long time. I was just uh, thinking about it the other day, because I there's a comic. There's a comic, and I was reading the comic. I was like going through my comics. I'm like, I forgot there's a Boondocks comic. I even like the sequel. I even like the sequel, which is not as good. Yeah. But uh, um, that's right. Trenton Quinn says, "Hey, drinker, a fun fact about your favorite werewolf movie, Dog Soldiers. Private Cooper is played by the same guy who voices Soap in Modern Warfare. Yes, I knew that. Um, Graham McTavish, I think his name is." And yeah, I fucking love Dog Soldiers. I did a review of it back in the day, but uh, I don't know. I'd quite like to do a new one, like or an updated one. But yeah, it's it's a highly recommended movie from me. I would, uh, if you're into like any like kind of, what would I even call it? Like it's it's about a team of like you know army guys who get like attacked by werewolves and they got the hole up in a farmhouse, but like really any kind of fan of thrillers or action movies or anything or horror is going to love it. Um, Bill Tatton says, Dear Drinker, thanks for the movie insights and all the laughs. Love your content. Thank you very much, my friend. Uh, Drive-by commenter says, Hi, fellas. Just got done watching Filmento's recent vid and realized another thing the classics did better. 
They focused on one high concept at a time. Interesting. Good point. I think oh. the classic movies, um, there was usually a better sense of pace. They were less frantic than movies are nowadays. Mm. Um, and because they obviously were wrestling with like inferior technology, there was a greater focus on acting and characters and, and writing, I think, than we get now. Yeah, I think there is uh, uh, there's a too much sense of we're on this big, we're on, for one, time schedules. You know, I, I don't remember them being that strict back in the day. Like you can mess with the movie's release date. Like now it's no, even if the movie's not finished, it has to be out by that release date and we'll just fix it all in post. We'll take care of everything in post, including a, a me too actor will be digitally put back, put in replaced in army of the dead with Tig Nataro. <sighs> that tells you that, that tell, I mean, like, you know, it's a Zack Snyder movie. So, but yeah, like that, that's not, you would have to, you know, how do you do that? How do you take a character that, yeah, I, I can't even get my head around that. But that was, Tig, was Tig Nataro ever entertaining or funny? No. Because I've legit never laughed at a single thing she said or done. No. She is one of those things where the right people in Manhattan and the right circles in Hollywood, um, liked her identity and she uh that's what she, i mean well I, like i feel the same way about her as i did uh rosie o'donnell right <laughs> yeah when rosie o'donnell was famous i'm like why is she famous she was obnoxious in and in, in, in a maybe uh likable way in one fucking movie and then she was like in everything for a little while. And then she got her talk show. I was like, why is she famous? I can't stand her. Kind of like uh, Amy Schumer, who's like the most chronically unfunny comedian I think I've ever seen. But like somehow she keeps getting gigs and she keeps getting movies. Like, I don't understand it. I don't either. Um, oh, be probably because she's related to a senator. Yeah. Yeah, that probably yeah, could be it. Um, Tony Mercer gave me a $5 super chat. So thanks, man. Um, and Andre Antonio Gonzalez says, Drink her. Let me drink your whiskey flavored uh, man juice. No, that's for Tatiana and nobody else. Yeah. Um, wow. Ed Star says, Having a wonderful time, guys. Here's 50 smackers for you. Thanks very much for that donation, man. And I appreciate your generosity. Uh, R. Taylor. N says, uh, cheers, drinker. It's all in the reflexes. Love this film and your channel. Thank you, mate. Uh, Kevin S gave me $5, so thank you. Uh, Kevin O'Neill says, drinker, my first year into heavy trucking, and I was on the highway on a dark and stormy evening, and pork chop express popped up on my playlist. For that brief moment, as I recited that opening sequence from memory, I was Jack Burton. <laughs> cheers. I hope you were eating like a big fucking pastrami sandwich at the same time and just ranting at people on, on the, the radio. <laughs> uh, but that's cool, man. Um, Doug Keller says, Drinker, will there be a mini review on Dirty Harry or will that be another live stream with Gary? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I could see myself doing a, a, like a smaller review on that on my second channel because it probably wouldn't get, like, it's not broad enough interest for like the main one, but yeah, it'd be good to talk about it because the Dirty Harry movies, man. I I miss guys like Clint Eastwood, you know, in movies who just played legitimate tough guys and just played them really well. Like, you, you don't get actors like him anymore. Uh, no, and you never will. Again, it's like a Kurt Russell. You'll never get one from Kurt. Another him. Yeah. Hmm. It, it just the, and there's no stars like that anymore, you know. We're we're not getting uh the, the brand of movies that we're getting uh, like it's a bunch of betas, man. Sorry, folks, but it's like, like you know, uh, it's like Michael Sarah is looking tough compared to fucking some of the people that we're rolling up now, and and you know, masculinity has gone so f the, the anti masculinity thing has gone so far out of whack now, to where yeah, you know. 
Like Dave Batista is like the last kind of, and, and I don't even like that guy act in real life, but at least he looks like an action star, right? Um, and we, yeah, we just don't get that anymore. It's just gone. Yeah. I mean, like, how many actors are there now where you think, oh, holy shit, he's got a new movie out? I've got to go and see that. There's, like, probably Tom Cruise is, like, the last kind of movie star. Uh, and, you know, you go and see the Mission Impossible movies, and they're pretty entertaining, but that's kind of it. Like, nobody else really sparks interest because there just aren't people with that kind of charisma and that kind of star power anymore. You know, there's movies that have got, like, plenty of actors in them, and it's, like, it sparks mild interest, but that's about the, as far as it goes. <clears throat> Keanu Reeves, people are saying in chat. Yeah, okay, I can go with that. Yeah, but I mean, he's not. Yeah, he's he's a, he's a, like a he's a version of it. God, it's so unlikely too. Never thought he like Keanu Reeves was like the goofy stoner guy uh, that became a legit actor. Yeah, he's he's that's it though. And like, why haven't uh, somebody brought this up last night uh, in my weird late night live stream is like you would you would think more people would have copied john wick right like it was such a hit and it's just an action movie they're not like super difficult to make uh and it looked like people were really hungry for that and we didn't get a lot after that you know or nobody tried uh now nobody again i don't know if you've seen this or not with bob Oden, odenkirk from uh better call saul no, I've heard about it though. It's apparently meant to be really good. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, definitely worth watching. Yeah. Oh, okay, that could be a, could be one for a review then. Yes. Uh, but yeah, there just wasn't a lot. I thought there would be more, but you know, yeah. I mean, the proof happened too. That could... I I watched um I watched Extraction with Chris Hemsworth, and that kind of had that same vibe to it, where it's just a straight up action movie. It's not got pretenses of being anything else. It's not trying to like preach to you or anything like that. It's just, you know, a, a guy kicking ass and um, a pretty uncomplicated story. And that kind of made me think, yeah, okay, you know, Hemsworth could probably fill that action role. I just don't know if he would want to. You know, he seems to want to like be more broad than that and do like comedies and everything else. So I don't know. Yeah, uh, It'd be really good for that though. It would. What's the next one here? So, uh, Shark Denter says, uh, "I still think that the potion had opium in it." <laughs> Discuss. Yeah, I could go with that if it makes you feel invincible. It probably did. Um, Eggshen Six Demon Bag says, uh, "Opium, wind, fire, all that kind of thing." <laughs> uh, Jay Fraser 360 says, Hail gents, what's your second favorite um, John Carpenter movie after Big Trouble? Also, will there be an all-star happy hour for the Lord of the Rings 20th anniversary? Oh, man, that's this year, isn't it? Shit. Oh, um, I think there should be, don't you? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, yeah. God, I can't believe it's this year. 20 years. 20 years. What has happened to my life? Oh yeah, booze. Yeah, booze. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, for for my second favorite John Carpenter movie, um, it would probably be The Thing. I reckon. Um, I've got a real soft spot for Mouth of Madness. Sorry, in the Mouth of Madness, but yeah, The Thing is just a fucking brilliant horror movie. Uh, the Thing. Totally agree with you. Um, do you think anyone anywhere in the universe has said Ghosts of Mars? No. <laughs> saw, it, saw it in theaters, was expecting big things, was very disappointed. Yeah. Oh, man. That was uh, that was a sad movie. That was uncomfortable to watch. It was. Um, and it had a good cast as well. you got Jason Statham. you got Pam Greer, Natasha Henstridge. Shit, man. And fucking iced teas in it for some reason. Yeah, no, I was looking forward like crazy to see this movie. I'm like, oh, this is going to kick ass. And uh, boy, it didn't. 
believe. Yeah. Uh, CD says, supposedly Lopan was originally written to be the villain in Buckaroo Banzai 2 when it was teased he would have been the leader of the World Crime Syndicate. If that's true, that's fucking great. Um, Enoch Maman says, Jack and the Demon became a trucker duo like uh, Phil Bedo and Clyde the Orangutan. <laughs> <laughs> right turn Clyde um, Coach Blackpill says I hope they don't remake it yeah The Rock was talking about remaking it yes, a few years was. back he wanted to do it He want, did he want to play Jack Burton fucking Fuck. not. Yeah, I hope not either yeah but I think he did uh, Red Crown 77 says Jack Burton is awesome but all the characters are great. I love the large scale fighting and magic. Yeah. Um, Let's go back. I liked vampires. It wasn't good, but I liked vampires. I saw it in that James Woods, right? Yeah. Vampires was silly. I'm not going to say it was good, but I like that. Hmm. And, uh, I'm going back. That what, He didn't do much after that director wise. Let's see. He uh, did Escape from L.A., which was silly and uh escape from la was legit terrible like new york was good but it was yeah. quite a slow paced kind of movie um and i kind of like that you know when snake Plissken surfed out of la right next to peter fonda that was uh that was something else oh god yeah and you got that weird like surfing music that plays you know tsunami man tsunami tsunami um yeah, that he, uh, God. Memoirs of the Invisible Man. I forgot he directed that. Yeah. Chevy Chase and Daryl Hannah. What the? Because he did, uh, he did the Halloween movies, or at least the first yeah. one. Yes, he did. Yeah. And I was. Oh, and um, what's the other one? The, the Prince of Darkness. It's like one one of his apocalypse trilogy movies. Yeah, that one's good. I like that. Yeah, one. I I quite liked it. Yeah, I remember it freaking me out, like with the the weird radio broadcast, like this, like throughout the movie. Like I always thought that was quite a cool little horror idea. Quite well, like that film. Did, like Dark Star, Assault on Precinct Thirteen, and then Halloween, and someone's watching me, which is a TV movie, Elvis TV movie. Then he did the Fog. Escape mm -hmm. from New York, The Thing, Christine, Starman. This is like when, uh, like Starman, there was talks of Academy Awards, right, uh, for Starman. And then uh, Big Trouble in Little China, Prince of Darkness, They Live, Memoirs of the Invisible Man. Uh, and that had to be kind of like how he soured on studio stuff. Body Bags, TV movie, In the Mouth of Madness, which is fucking, that's his last great movie. Yeah. Right? And then it's Village of the Damned, Escape from LA vampires goes to Mars, uh, the ward, and that was it for directing. Yeah, I think he's pretty much done. Yep. Okay. He's old though. He's getting up. Yeah, yeah. Christ. If you if you were active in like the seventies and eighties, then yeah, you're pretty much you must be retired by now. Uh, what's the next one? Wormy Spoon says, "Drinker, can you please review what dreams may come?" Uh, I could like add it to the list, I guess. Um, R. Taylor said, uh, ultimate feel-good movie experience is see Superman the movie and Star Wars as an eight-year-old. The rush hasn't faded in 40 years. Man, yeah. Wish you could have seen them at the cinema. Um, Stephen Otten says, double feature, Big Trouble in Little China and your choice here. Um, pfft, man, what the follow-up? I'd probably say Tremors. Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah. Uh, in Little China and Tremors, like perfect duo of movies for me. I, um, I think that would be a great double feature. Uh, John Wayne says, Hail Drinker and Gary, one of my favorite movies, never gets old. It's so enjoyable listening to you all discuss such a fun movie while peeling crawfish and drinking beer. <laughs> Love quoting this film. <laughs> I hope the crawfish were good, man. Uh, Douglas A. Burton says, as a first cousin to Jack Burton, I freaking love this movie. Uh, watching this flick recently made me realize that the best American heroes are just blue collar guys, farm boys, truckers, and cowboys. And elites don't know how to write that point of view anymore. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right there. Fucking hell. Um, K. 
Ken in the North says, one of my favorites, thanks for the review, was worried the short clip you did was going to be it. Uh, no, no, no. Um, we, we discussed this for a while, Gary. I think just yeah. doing a, a live stream on this. And I kind of just wanted to get my, my thoughts out as well, like as a scripted review, um, just for people that aren't maybe that interested in the live streams. Um, and so like did a bit of both, really. So it's quite rare for me to do that with a film. Uh, Zero Red Fox says, Speaking of 80s style films, have you watched Kung Fury? It's fan made and available on YouTube. Yes, and I've done a live stream on it. So, uh, yeah, go back like a month or two. And we did Cobra Kai and Kung Fury at the same time. And yeah, had an absolute blast talking about that film. It's, it's awesome. It's over the top and ridiculous and perfect. <laughs> it's great. Um, this one. Star Trekker 58 says, current day self-insert writers in our supposed entertainment, they think they're great because they only listen to the 5% of people that agree with them. Uh, yeah, very much so. Um, if you if you live on Twitter, then you're not living in real life. No. Um, Philip Petty says, I modded my truck after Iron Man. Well, of course you would. I mean, why not? Um Report Red says, Drinker, did you watch uh, Invincible? Full of identity politics. I haven't seen Invincible yet. Uh, have you seen it, Gary? Inv no, I haven't seen Invincible yet. I, uh, I got through part of the first episode, but I got a long way to go. Okay. Uh, Nick B says, when I was a kid, I wanted an adventure like the Goonies had so badly. <laughs> Loved it. <laughs> yeah, everyone did. You know, that was the thing. Like movies back then, just really grabbed you and like made you, you swept you up in like ideas of adventure and stuff. It was great. Yeah. Actually, taken away. You don't have to worry about encountering. You know, being reminded where you are constantly. Uh, yeah. you know, like it, uh, movies like Legend. Okay, I fucking love that movie. Uh, I know uh, a lot of people don't, and that's fine. It's one of Ridley Scott's. You know, really like one of his bad ones, <laughs> but, uh, I liked it. I liked Tim Curry in it and it was, it was true escapism, you know, uh, just, uh, not much of a story, but really good visuals and stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. The soundtrack I remember being really good as well. Yeah. Very Tim like epic and orchestral and stuff. Uh, Chris Topher says, uh, Jack continued to drive his truck. His next route will take him to New York. Getting there was easy, but leaving will not be. Now he must escape from New York. <laughs> uh, indeed. Um, Cracked Eggs says, my name is Dolomite. Is Eddie Murphy's best newer film? Uh, I have not seen that, so I couldn't tell you. Um, I haven't seen an Eddie Murphy film in fucking ages, to be honest. Um Firafima says Rome fell after the Christians started preaching in the Colosseum instead of fighting lions. Society needs its bread and circuses. Uh, yeah, you could be right there, actually. Uh, the Whitfield Report says Hollywood needs to return to escapism and just make movies fun again. Let men be masculine and women be glamorous and sexy once again. No, nah, no, nah, you can't do that. Now, now you have to make women masculine and men losers, I think. That's the that's the secret to real success in Hollywood now, apparently. Uh, Welk says... Go on, sorry. No, no, no. Um, you want to say something there? No, oh, no, nothing important. I was just agreeing. Okay. Uh, Welk says, another silly movie in the flavor of Big Trouble, Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. Remo Williams. Hmm. Oh, that is good stuff. Uh, sexy butt crack says hail critical drinker love your reviews of course love your shows gary you guys always entertain us thank you very much thank you uh, pickle jars for hillary says you don't want to pay 55 dollars for popcorn <laughs> i don't eat popcorn at the fucking cinemas like I, i'm never interested in that stuff i just want to watch the movie like i'm not one of those people that has to like constantly eat and drink um snow dub music says one of the best movies ever made carpenter rocks indeed he does uh eric k says awesome good movie and listening to you both was awesome uh, and a good time i salute you both cheers thank you eric k and i salute you um blasters luigi says love the little china talk lads 
but got an off-topic question. Favorite cartoon intros? The two that give me chills, uh, SWAT Cats and Roughnecks. Cartoon intros that give me chills. Uh, I don't know. Um, well, I can tell you, for me, it's Thundercats. And there was a cartoon that we had over here in the UK called Bucky O'Hare. Both of those just had fucking kick-ass, awesome, like, guitar 1980s, like, intros. They were just great. Loved them both. Uh yeah, I, I, I'm old, so the Spider-Man cartoon from the 60s had the best theme song ever, and oh, God. I love the Johnny Quest theme. Ah, yeah. Now, 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 now. It's a good theme. Uh, someone's mentioned Mysterious Cities of Gold. God damn, I remember that show. Man, I, I need to go back and watch all these shows. <laughs> They were great. I'm just going to get lost in my childhood again. Um, what's the next one? Sue Chapman says, any chance of a review of Escape from New York, Drinker? Yes, there's a very good chance, actually, because I'm quite interested in talking about that now. Um, William Barr says, you goonies! <laughs> uh, Ryan Wheeler, Drinker, any chance of uh, In the Mouth of Madness review or commentary? Uh, almost certainly. Um, probably... October sort of time. It's a good sort of Halloween-y film to talk about. Uh, Bullet Shepherd says, have either of y'all ever heard Carpenter's Lost Themes albums, their original works in the same synth style as his movies? Definitely check them out. I haven't, personally. I don't know if you have, oh, Gary. I'm going to have to check that out, too. I want to know about it. I love I love his rework stuff. It, it, or Anything he does on synth is great. It's great. Uh, one second. Uh, Incognito Potato says, you should check out the series The Tick on Amazon Prime Video. It's kind of like The Boys. Hmm. Oh, it's fantastic. The Tick I is have heard, fantastic. Yeah, I've heard good things about it. I've never seen it myself. Like, um, Ironworks Gaming says, super fan of this movie. If you haven't seen this fan-made video of... Um, Big Trouble. Both watch it now. Search on YouTube for Lopan style Gangnam style parody. Ah, definitely. Uh, another person's mentioned that, so I'm going to have to watch that after this. Um, Douglas A. Burton says, any chance that Drinker and Gary do a happy hour on Krull? So quirky and so 80s. Krull's a movie I've not heard in a long time. Oh, love it. Man. It's, it's very uh, quirky. Yeah, it's very quirky and it's very very weird and there's some awful deaths in it as i remember mm -hmm. people getting like slowly impaled on spikes and the fucking cyclops getting crushed in a door yeah man oh. uh, drunk monkey says the layer cake awesome soundtrack with daniel craig home mini and tom hardy oh. yes yeah good movie such a good movie um polly in sd says uh, just for bringing up a fun movie, love Big Trouble in Little China. Thank you, man, and thanks for the donation. Um, Stephen Lanuto says, um, "Oh my god, <laughs> oh my, oh my godsies, Jack as Burton, <laughs> godsies, oh my godsies." Um, Riff Magos says, "Hail Drinker and, and Gary, uh, you fucking legends." Thank you. Uh, Bones 8 says, you guys always entertaining. Almost forgot about Big Trouble. It makes me want to check out Tango and Cash later tonight. Oh, yeah. Tango and Cash. Oh, such a good movie. Uh, Wizard Glicks uh, gave me a $5 super chat. Thank you, man. Um, Roger H says, damn it, got unsubscribed from your channel. Oh, I take a dim view of that kind of thing. Um, that was happening... Uh, over the past couple of weeks on YouTube. I don't know if you've noticed this, Gary, mm -hmm. but you could fucking tell every time you posted a video, you'd lose like 200 subscribers yep. just the moment it went up. Um, and then you wouldn't gain any for like several hours, and it was then really slow. And it went on for weeks. And it's just some weird thing that YouTube had been doing with the algorithm. It really yeah. pissed me and off. They, they, and it looked like things were getting a little better, and then it went, took a step back, and then it looked like things were getting better. But uh, apparently, uh, they have acknowledged that there is a problem, and they're working on it. So, 
Yeah, it's, it. It, it's definitely stopped now. Like the, the, the amount of views and the amount of like kind of channel growth that I've been getting is back to normal now. But yeah, it's definitely taken weeks to, to, to do that. I haven't put out a video since it, since it happened because um, I, I was waiting. I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to wait to do Falcon and Winter Soldier. So I took mm -hmm. advantage of uh, having a little time to where I because you well, I don't know. I, I, I report on news. So it happens whenever it happens. So I'm like, I'm not going to report on any news this week. I'm just going to do reviews and get work done that I need to get done. Yeah. And uh, so we'll find out if it's gotten better or not because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, like I say, yeah, it, it seems to be all right now, but like I, I don't know, you know, you never know when it's going to revert back and do yeah. something else crazy. Um, Jiu Jitsu lover gave me ten dollars, so thanks, man. Um, Niffle Hell forty two says, "Love that you guys talking about my favorite movie since a kid, even on my birthday. Thirty eight years old now. Want to give a shout out to my homie Old Man Chip that introduced me to your channels. Well, oh. thank you, Old Man Chip, um, and yeah." much appreciated uh chris says been watching your videos for a while first time i've been on while you're streaming shut up and take my money and thanks for the entertainment <laughs> well thanks for the money chris uh nexus 974 says there is a jack burton meets snake plissken comic book uh excellent that's what you're saying before i think yes uh Elizabeth Lyons says, thank you for this. You are both two of my favorites, and to see you together is fantabulous. Thank you, uh, and much appreciated. Um, Random Nonsense says, do you think Kylo Ren being the main character of The Force Awakens would have worked out better? Flipping preconceived notions about the Force, Ray using the light side doesn't mean she's good. Uh, yeah, I actually thought that was what they were going to do. They were going to make him the, the protagonist of the, the trilogy. I thought, ah, they've got a smart plan. Everything's going to work out well. And then I realized how horribly wrong I was. Yep. Uh, we all were. Hats off to you, JJ Abrams. You fooled me. You fooled me good with your mystery box. For the last. You, 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 you shyster, you. Mm -hmm. uh, Saint says, hello to Drinker and Gary. If you or anyone here are interested in a fantasy novel series, I just wrapped the Lightbringer series by Brent Weeks. I highly, highly recommend. So, people listening, give uh, the Lightbringer series by Brent Weeks a try. Uh, just give me one second. I'll just catch sure, up here. Sure. No, take your time. Uh, where are you? Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, John L. Rice says, I love you too. If I ever win billions of dollars, I will hire you both to work on proper live action shows of Magnus Robot Fighter 4000 AD. Oof. And it'll be an honor. That'd be awesome. Uh, Pauline SD says, "Have you guys read Super Folks? I read it as a kid, and it's still uh, it's still in print list. The time I was at a comic book store. By the way, Gary uh, left San Francisco. Where to? Just curious. Um, he's in San uh, Dance. Sorry, he's in San Diego, California. For temporarily, yes. And then I'm gonna move to Texas." Um, insult to the human race says looks like this has been a fun time hope the hangover isn't too rough well once you're immune to alcohol then it doesn't matter anymore yeah it's fine it's your bloodstream right it's your uh, alcohol yeah. it's when I get sober that's my hangover and so yeah. I have to keep fending off um, Alyosha says drinker walker or army navy cold uh, probably the army one I think as far as I remember uh yeah, I think this is the Colt Army. Um, Star Trekker 58 says, Woke up late, we'll have to rewatch. Sorry about using uh, Woke anywhere near Big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> Tam did it again. Fun movie that I saw in the cinema. Yeah, uh, that's the only context you can use Woke around this movie. Um, Bobo Snap says, I know you did the thing. Uh, more horror reviews. Bone Tomahawk, Martyr, Cannibal Holocaust. Uh, yeah, indeed. It's just... I think there's a time of the year to do horror movies reviews and you know springtime probably isn't it yeah time to do it you know do it and do it in autumn time then you're fine oh that's what killed the ash versus evil dead show right so they delayed uh it had premiered right around october 
and season two came out in October. Then there was a delay and then they premiered season three in spring. And you're like watching Ash like slaughter freaking, you know, deadites to, with blood, buckets of blood everywhere in like, you know, springtime. It just didn't didn't feel right. Yeah. No, absolutely. Like um, it's the same with with um, any sort of horror games. Like if, if it's like Silent Hill or Resident Evil or Outlast or anything like that. I, I never want to play them in the summertime. I just want to wait until like, uh, you know, the nights start drawing in and the weather gets cold and stuff. And that's the time to play stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the, I've got plenty of horror movies lined up for October. So you'll be fine. Oh, yeah, you can do one every day. Uh, SH says, I forgot why I subbed to this channel. This is why you sub, so that you could hear us talk about movies like this. Um, Skull Monkey says, Hey, Drinker, love your stuff. This is my favorite movie of all time. Definitely no remake or sequel, but what about an Egg Shen prequel with Egg coming across and fighting Lopan for the first time? Uh, I don't know, because you know how it's going to end up, you know? Um... I think this this movie just works as a perfect standalone for me. I don't I don't need to see anything more in that universe. Um, Moronese Cold says this emoticon has to has been inspired by Big Trouble in Little China, and it's the. <laughs> wait, wait, I need to get myself on camera here. You know, whenever you kill someone in a martial arts contest, yeah. Uh, what's the next one? Uh, Josiah RT says, can you reach out to Vox's Productions and stream with him? He's hilarious, but doesn't want to message you because he's only got 100,000 subscribers. Toodles. Yeah, God, only 100,000. Oh, yeah, 100,000. As, as if that's a tiny channel or something. You know, that's cool. Um, yeah, I, I'll happily talk to him, see what we can do. Um, Straw Dog says, hail Gary and Drinker, Army Infantry Vet, a huge fan of you both. Gary, I've got the Aquitas to your Veritas on my arm. Uh, Drinker, you need to watch Boondock Saints for sure. Okay. Fantastic movie. And do you know the story behind it too, right? The director. Like, uh, it's um, it's called, what is the documentary called? I keep forgetting the name. Uh, it, it's, a say, it's a saying for out of, uh, out of nowhere. Damn it. Um, now I'm going to have to look it up. Sorry. So there's a documentary on the director and it's just as interesting and it was supposed to be kind of a fluff piece, but then it turned into a hit piece uh, because the guy was such, he lost it, the guy who wrote the script for boondock saints was a bouncer and, and he, and he wrote the script and it became one of the most sought after scripts in Hollywood. So it went to his fucking head. Right. And then the direct, then that documentary came out. And, uh, and then he kind of came around, you know, so, uh, it's, it's really interesting. So the story behind the movie is as good as the movie itself. Okay. No, I like that. Uh, what's the next one? Mike Newman says big trouble in little China is a great movie. Have you ever seen the Chuck Norris movie, silent rage or lone wolf McQuaid? I've seen lone wolf McQuaid for sure. And that was great. Uh, I haven't seen silent rage though. Uh, JSP says, is the drinker ever going to do a recommends video on the Terminator? Um, well, I've already covered it with Mahler. We talked about Terminator 1 and 2. So, yeah, I feel like I've, I've said everything I can possibly say about that film at this point. Um, it seems a bit much to do then another review on top of it. Uh, but yeah, I absolutely recommend it. It's awesome. So the, the documentary is available on Pluto TV to watch for free about the director of Boondock Saints. Uh, Do Boondock Saints, his name was Troy Duffy, and it's called Overnight. Highly recommend it. Overnight. Overnight. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, Trenton Quinn says, two questions. First, when are you moving to Texas, Gary? Second, when are you moving to Texas, drinker? We need more common sense this way. <laughs> I would love for a drinker to move to Texas. Uh, six months. Six months. Cool. Yeah. Uh, my time frame is a bit longer to move to Texas. A little longer, yeah. <laughs> uh, Patrick Burns uh, gave me $50 super ch sticker. So thank you very much, man. Um, ZXC1972 says, Dr. Drinker, Goodfellas and uh, Wolf of Wall Streets are the same movie. 
Same beats, development, and outcomes. Italian and Anglo version of the same tale. Damn, that's an interesting look at it. Um, I'm weirdly I'm comparing the two in my head now, and I'm coming up with like interesting thoughts. Hmm. Okay, I never thought about it like that. Hmm. Um, so I'm going to have to go away and think about that properly for a while. Yeah. Uh, so Graven uh, says, "Shut up, Mister Drinker. <laughs> you are not brought upon this world to." Get it. <laughs> uh, SH says, need more movies where they kill the main guy's dog. That's awful. I hate when that happens. I don't like to see dogs get killed in movies. Uh, I'm still traumatized by The Fly, too, actually. Fucking hell. Uh, Glay Cornelius says, I'm a millennial, uh, but sorry, but I want my male stars to be guys like in the days of old. Side note, I watched Backdraft, and it's a legit Kurt Russell movie. It is a legit Kurt Russell movie, and it's quite good. I mean, I like Backdraft. Um, Bob Newfart says, outside of Howard Hawks and Sergio Leone, John Carpenter is my favorite director of all time. Some good names there, like. Uh, Stephen Otten says, nobody is, a f nobody is a fun one. From the writer of Wick, Bob Odenkirk's body count matches Keanu's. Extraction is my favorite, sorry, in my... 10 best of last year. Hmm. Yeah, so everyone's saying I should, I should do nobody, essentially. So I'll need to give that movie a look. Mm -hmm. uh, Danny Boy says, my friend is dying of reasons. Uh, Colossus roar for the win. Save his life. It's super freaking easy. Gary, I think you should do the roar. Oh, my God. Me? Because it's lot. like the middle of the night here. So oh. <laughs> I'm going to get arrested. I need to <laughs> Hang on, I need a reference so I can do it right. I haven't heard that roar in since I was a kid. I mean, like a, a twenty year old kid. Hang on, Colossus roar of video game. Uh, hang on. Okay, so is this it? The arcade game. Wait. Oh yeah. So it's like this. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I think it's about as close as the human throat can manage. <laughs> like, yeah. But without all the blown out <laughs> going on there. Yeah. That was good effort, man. Thank you. Um, SH says, The Thing, 1982, best horror movie ever. Uh, yeah, it's definitely up there. Yep. Um, Jester of Roanoke says, Hemsworth has an alpha body but a beta mindset. Uh, I always thought he was kind of non-woke, but I could be wrong about that. I thought he was like pretty laid-back Aussie. Um, Elizabeth, yeah. the 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 actors now. I think Jeremy Renner might be the only one who might be close to being like he'll never come out and say he's, you know, we'll say practicing common sense. Uh, but yeah, they can't say shit anymore. So mm -hmm. in, in a way, that's kind of beta. It's, it's really beta. It's like, oh, I'm trying to save my job so I won't say like how I stand on a political issue. Right? It's That's pretty fucking beta. Yeah, it's weird. It's like Gina Carano, a woman, seems to be the most alpha male of, of the Hollywood actors. Yeah. And look where that got her. She got fired from everything. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth Lyons says, this is Jack Burton. Sorry, this is Jack Burton in the Pork Chop Express, and I'm talking to whoever's listening out there. <laughs> yeah. The the quotes just keep coming. It's awesome. Um, Enoch Maman says, top five John Carpenter films. One, The Thing. Two, Escape from New York. Three, Halloween. Four, Assault on Precinct 13. Uh, and five, Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah. I, I would probably move Big Trouble up there, and I'd move Assault yeah. on Precinct 13. 13 down uh but yeah that that 80s period man that's when carpenter was on fire um uh, bastard luigi says wasn't carpenter part of an anthology as well mm, not that i know of did he did he oh uh i don't know did, did, he direct... did, did he direct some anthology series or something i know maybe he was uh let me look that up a little. You know, my brain ain't working. Uh, yes. Uh, Creep Show. Oh, yeah. Did he direct that? 
Did he? No, he didn't. Okay. Julia, I was like, I'm no, I'm looking up the wrong name. So creep show, yeah. Oh, okay. There was a relationship in it, but it's not uh yeah, John Carpenter is not involved in it in any, mm -hmm. in any way. Okay. Creep show was a good movie. That was a good movie. I love Creep Show too as well. Mm. Uh you ever seen Creep Show too? I don't think I have. To it's be honest, it's not as good as pre Creep Show one, but it it, it it's a little funnier. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, I think we're almost at the end, actually. Um, Michael Rivera says, "Just recently stumbled upon Jin Ro, the Wolf Brigade. Not much into anime, but I enjoyed seeing an alternate history of Japan post World War II. Any thoughts? Uh, you both are legends. Thank you. Um, I I don't have any thoughts on that because I'm afraid I've never seen it, so I couldn't tell you, man." Which um, one was that again? Sorry. Jin Ro, The Wolf Brigade. It's I an anime. Know. Yeah, I've not seen it. Uh, R. Taylor says, Drinker, we'd love to hear your review. Roadhouse, totally is awesomeness on every level. Yeah. Roadhouse is a fucking great movie. Uh, very watchable. You ever seen Next to Kin? With Patrick Swayze? I feel like I have. It's like he'll... Um, it's, it's pretty good. I, I I saw that one a long time ago. I mean, it's not great, but I, I enjoyed it. Next, yeah. I would. I honestly really would like to do Tango and Cash. I think that would be a good a good movie to talk about. I would love that movie so much. I, I, love, I love it when they're going to prison and they're in the shower and they're still bantering like everything's going to be fine. Like their life is over. They were just framed for, for whatever. Right. And they're like, yeah, you've got me in here first. And no, oh, no, you're going to get pounded in the ass first or whatever. Yeah. Hilarious. You, just, you can't keep those guys down. It's, can't uh, keep them down. Yeah. That kind of movie. <laughs> yeah, you tango and cash. Uh, Luck 107 says, I wish Hollywood realized that tearing down every character around your woke main character doesn't make them look good. It just makes them look petty and unrelatable. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the easier you make things for your character, the less likable they actually are. Um, Next to the the Patrick Swayze, Liam Neeson, and Bill Paxton. Just like I mean, I'm sold. Yeah. I'm sold. Uh, Alden the Blue says, well, we should have had a crossover between the Goonies, Big Trouble, or Lost Boys. No one can convince me otherwise. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great to just see some epic 80s crossover movie where they all just kind of unite somehow? Oh, well. Uh, Delta Dan says, Drinker, you should review The Machine Gun Preacher, one of my obscure favorites. I've never seen it, but I have heard about it. I remember just seeing the trip. Um Spawn Freak says, Drinker, do you plan to do an update on Cobra Kai? Uh, I mean, if there's anything else to review, like I've done a review of the first two seasons and then I did a live stream on the third one. I'll see how I feel after season four, I guess. Um, Alyosha says, thinking uh, the guard review is in order. Also, come to Alaska and look me up. Have a Navy Dragoon and access to a gravel pit. Well, that's all I need, man. Um, what is the guard? I don't know. I mean, I think of Old Guard, which is like an action movie from like a year ago or something, but I don't know about the guard. Hmm. Hmm. Um, what's the next one here? Oh, yeah. Um, Alexander Bion Stross says 1983 Space Hunter Adventures in the Forbidden Zone. How could you go wrong? Heavy metal used part of the soundtrack for this film. Hmm. Uh, Oki Native says a movie so good that Alan sorry only Alan Rickman could make it better like he did uh, in the movie Hair uh, uh, Mass Nerderer says have you guys seen Buckaroo Banzai have I, I haven't seen you haven't seen it I haven't seen Buckaroo Banzai what? still oh, haven't seen it god it, it's on my list, but it's one of those ones I can just never find. Oh, oh my sorry. God. That movie was uh, no matter where you go, there you are. I mean, shit, that was fucking eighties vernacular. Uh, yeah, uh, it's it's a fantastically weird movie. Love it. I will. I will definitely make time to see it. Um, 
Another reference to it, actually, from Woven Hillpaw says, Big Trouble in Little China with Buckaroo Banzai as the second feature. Um, Frozen in the 80s says, uh, Nerdrotic, just subscribe to your channel. Love the content. Drinker Michael Scott from The Office would make a good lead role for your book series. <laughs> oh, yeah, I could definitely carry, you know, um, the whole superhero, or sorry, the whole, um, you know, espionage stuff, um, getting shot at and stuff. Like Michael Scott's the guy for that. Um, Elizabeth Lyons says, Drinker and Gary, review Boxing Helena. So quirky. <laughs> Fuck. That was a weird movie. Jesus. Oh, God, yeah. That's disturbing, that's, that movie. That's the one where he chops off her arms and legs and stuff, and then it yeah. turns out to all be a fantasy or something. Um, Sterling Sapien says, thoughts, thoughts on the movie? Oh, fuck. I just, I just lost my connection. Oh, no. Thoughts on the movie Cliffhanger, underrated. Um, yeah, I like Cliffhanger. Um, good movie. John Lithgow was a good villain. And um, yeah, it was quite, it was one of Stallone's rare successes in the 90s, I think. Yep. Uh, Darth Wannabe says, would love to see a review of Rollerball. Oh, man. Yeah, I could do that. Um, Stephen Lanuto says, Drinker, how about Hunt for Red October? Yes, that's going to be a Drinker's uh, like short review on my second channel. Definitely. Uh, Texas Warhawk. Seriously, check out Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man. If you dig cheesy 80s guy films, guns, rock and roll, chicks, and pure nonsense. Fantastic. Uh, okay, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, Brainsync says, did you mention they live by uh, John Carpenter? Next up, Galaxy Quest would be great for happy hour. Love you both. Keep up the good work, my friends. I think They Live would be a good one, definitely, yeah. to review. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, US 88209 Fast says, what about They Live, which is pretty much what is happening today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. That, that's the consensus. They Live has got to be done. Um, and Scotty Rocker gave me a super chat for $5. And I think that's it. Uh, let's just see if there's anything else. Uh, Colin the McInnes gave me uh, 20 secs, whatever they are. Um, and Bruce Vile uh, gave me five euros 49. So thank you to both of you. I appreciate it. Um, oh, and Alosha says um, for Brendan Gleeson, Don Cheadle takes place in Scotland. You'll love it. Also, you're going to hell on BB. <laughs> Uh, what's this one? Oh, sure. Ah, oh, right. Okay, the guard. Right. So, all right. So, the guard stars Brendan Gleeson, Don Cheadle, and it takes place in Scotland. I'm gonna have to look that up, actually. Yeah, I got clear. You just brought up Cliffhanger, and it's like that's I right. I like that film. I did, yeah. I that's right when I started at the warehouse. Uh, my friend, Doug, he might even be in the chat. Uh, my friend Doug was a manager there and he gave me a job at the warehouse. And that's when Cliffhanger came out. Right when I started, uh, you, and I worked in the V. I I uh, did the VHS rentals. That's what I. That was my job. So it's like that move. That uh, everything that came out from ninety four to ninety seven is seared in my head. Yeah. It all a million times. I saw every between ninety four and ninety seven. I saw everything, everything. Uh, yeah. I had all those movies around me all the time. So I was like, all right, yeah, take it home. Watch this, it. Uh, yeah, this movie, The Guard, has got Brendan Gleeson, Don Cheadle, Mark Strong, Liam Cunningham. Um, damn, that's not a bad cast, actually. Yeah, uh, it's got ninety four percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Cool. All right, I'll have a look at that one. Actually, that sounds good. Uh, but I think, I think that's it. We, we've all right. made it to the end of all the super chats. Uh, yeah. Holy shit, we survived. We survived, man. We did it. We made it through uh, talking about one of the greatest movies ever. Yeah. It's a rough life we re we lead but you know it, it, it's awful getting paid to talk about movies that we really enjoy <laughs> we, we somehow we 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 suffer through it and thank god for the chat who yeah. suffered with us uh damn that was fun it was fun starting my day watching that movie hanging with you most of the day now i gotta like 
go back to Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yay. Isn't it going to be great, man? I'm looking forward to reviewing that one. Oh my God, Carly is so stunning. She is the greatest villain. I mean, Thanos, Dormammu, Carly. She's like totally yeah. on the Mount Rushmore of villains in the MCU. Yeah, I was literally shaking every time she was on screen. And you know what's interesting is like I really identify with her. Like she's so sympathetic. Um, I, I was like, yeah, it's definitely worth blowing up innocent civilians to further your cause because you feel a bit aggrieved. Because her cause was, it was better than the blip, right? Like, yeah. how's she going to achieve that? How's she going to get rid of half the population? Well, she's going to need a lot of bullets, obviously. Yeah. And it's going to take a while. But she's determined. She's going to get there. Well, yeah, she- you know, isn't that isn't that a great metaphor for, like, modern culture? Where it's like, oh, when when half the world's population was gone we got loads of free stuff and then they came back and then they took our free stuff away and now i'm mad so i'm gonna kill a bunch of people to get our free stuff back again yeah no that's not how life works i'm afraid honey no and and they're really like so they got this villain that that they aren't going to be able to fight right i mean sam wilson is 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 not going to be able to punch carly in the face no Nope. You can't fight a woman. Or you definitely can't beat her, and you can't hit her. So, so what they're doing is trying to run off that imagery. I don't know if you're aware of that statue of the little girl in front of like the bull or the bear at Wall Street. It's supposed to be, you know, it's like this little girl and with pigtails and a and a dress, like facing off against the mighty bull. And that's the imagery they're trying to, you know, that like the shit. Like I don't know if you ever heard of this comic book called I Kill Giants. And it's about this little girl who kills giants. So it's that kind of stuff. It's like, um, you know, for one, when you take the super soldier serum, you're supposed to look like a super soldier, but apparently you can still be flabby and super strong. I don't know. How, yeah, how I, I picked up on this because fuck, man, uh, Chris Evans put in the work to get big. Yeah. You know, um, Sebastian Stan got pretty big for playing the winter soldier. He's been dosed with the super serum as well. These guys just look like shitty actors that they got off the street. It's like, nah, don't bother going to the gym or anything. You can just rock up as you are. Yeah, I mean, and they're the most like sad, unthreatening morons that you could wish to see. Yeah, exactly. And that was one of my biggest criticisms of Brie too. Is like Brie, you know, yoke up a little bit, put on some weight, try to look like a. I mean, it wouldn't work, but uh, yeah, no, I'm right there with you, man. It's it's fucking it's lazy. It's called lazy. That's what they are now. Yeah, and it's such a shame because I really like the Winter Soldier as a character. I think Bucky's really cool, and I I really wanted that redemption arc for him. I really wanted him to get the shield and just be you know the next Captain America. I to, I never understood why it went to Sam, uh, and this this show doesn't do a good job of explaining why he should have it. In fact, it just makes me want him to not have it even more. Yeah, Sam Sam doesn't deserve it. They only gave it to him because they gave it to him in the comics, but at least in the comics, they gave it to Bucky first. It still didn't make any sense after that. But Yeah. Well, so, got- yeah, there's so much to, to pick up on when I do this review, but yeah, the, the writing of this show is absolutely terrible. It's terrible. Uh, I'll, I'll save that for another day, but I mean, honestly, man, like uh, t- talking about this movie has just been fantastic like it's been it's made me so happy to watch it again and to to be able to share this with everyone and the amount of people that have tuned in for this one it kind of makes me realize how popular it is <laughs> it's been great yeah i i i didn't realize how popular it was i mean i i i because uh you know I, I was you know before i got on i was doing some look and just to, like get the collectibles all freaking sell like crazy the toys are expensive anything that ever was sold like there's an art of uh big trouble in little china books worth 200 bucks 300 bucks you know uh, so like that's that's a sign of something that's very healthy and strong and and preserved and should never be messed with ever ever mm. yeah very much um, well, I just want to say, like, thanks, thank you to you, Gary, for joining me for this tonight. You know, thanks to everyone in chat for for tuning in. Thank you for, you know, all the awesome super chats, and thank you for being so generous and giving us your time and and uh, donations. And man, I really appreciate it. And 
yeah, looking forward to doing more of these in future. But I guess for now, like we're we're pretty much finished up here. It's like one in the morning for me, so I'm probably going to sign off now. So I guess that's that's all we've got for today. So we're going to go away now.